Hello, everybody. We are Dudes After Dark. That's Shadi. I'm Nick. Hello, Shadi. Hello, Nick. How are you? Oh, you know, we got a $111,000 carryover in the best track in the world. Um, as of four minutes ago, there's 160000 already bet into it. So we got a 270 some odd thousand pick five uh, at Turfway. So the degenerates are going to degenerate Friday night. Uh, Weekend finale for Turfway. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, basketball hasn't technically started yet, I don't believe. I think we still got a few minutes for that. So uh, let's talk Turfway. Heck yeah, I am down to do that. Uh, Davey will be joining us uh, a little bit later. Uh, so he's hopefully not getting a speeding ticket driving home right now. <laughs> now, we are about 10 minutes to post, give or take, to the beginning of this pick five, starting race four. Did you want to go ahead and maybe talk about your pick five ticket that you have set up yeah, here? There you go. So my biggest opinion of this whole thing was I like the one. And because I'm terrible at making pick five tickets, I threw the four on too. Because, you know, that's what you're supposed to do is uh, have your favorite, have your best, most likely your choice top winner. And then put the favorite on too. Nobody tell ITP. He will probably mock me and kill me. Um, in the next race, uh, pick or the race five, race five helps if I click the right one. It's a eight thousand dollar claimer for four Phillies, four and up. So Philly mares, and it's just one of those just get through the leg. So I kind of covered the gamut there. That six race is what I found to be a pretty interesting race. Um, mm -hmm. yep, that is a similar. Sorry, that was the four year old Philly mare eight K, and that one I had a little bit. A tight of opinion. I really liked um, Lady Hamilton, and then my top pick was actually the eight Lunar Ice, who came out of back-to-back second-place finishes, and I felt like she had a real chance of moving forward there. Not a not a great price at nine to two, but I I like that one. Um, and then in leg eight, leg eight, did I skip a leg? I did. Sorry, I I'm using time form now on DRF, and it's way different. I don't like it, but my old man. Uh, clicking around will eventually work here uh it's a <laughs> what three-year-old phillies 15 mate 15k mating claimers um i like the 10 which is a first time starter for ruiz yizzy's mm -hmm. bolt and then i also like the 11 east stormy um a, linda rice ships down from aqueduct which she doesn't do very often this is only her third start at turfway yeah. this year and gets uh abel Cedillo. so i i love Cedillo. i love I don't love Linda Rice, but I like the idea of Linda Rice shipping down. So, Just for um, Linda. yes. And then uh, <laughs> I really like the 12 um, in the last race. And again, because I hate ticket structure, I threw the five and the eight on. They're both six and five to one, respectively. So, not not a huge killer there. And I feel like those are the three that are going to get me through that leg. The biggest challenge is probably that second leg where I have six horses picked. And I'm kind of feeling like I probably picked the wrong ones. So, well, we'll don't that say that time. because we we share some uh, some picks. So we are also doing a Discord pick five. So this is a collaborative effort by some of the folks on the Racing Dudes Discord, which you should join if you have not joined already. Uh, so this is kind of an accumulation of a bunch of our picks. Um, we we have some races that we agree on. There are some races that you know we we went shorter than you and then vice versa. So there is a possibility though that both of our tickets can hit, which we always love to see. Our tickets a little bit more expensive. Uh, trying to trying to trying to scoop this pool. 
we're, I think that the shortest we go is in that uh, second to last leg, the penultimate leg, if you will. Um, we kind of just liked that 11 and 12 and like, you know what, let's keep this ticket under $200. And hopefully uh, this uh, 12 is the one that I think we have the strongest opinion on. But the 11, your Linda Rice horse is one that we, we just couldn't leave off for the reasons that you just gave. So Yeah, it, that's a tough one to leave off. And she only has three starts, but she has two wins out of those three starts mm -hmm. and all three hit the board. So yep. it does feel a little bit hard to get around that one. Um, and if this weren't a um, carryover and it weren't, you know, such a large pool, I would probably have singled that 11. There's still maybe a ticket that I make here in the next few minutes that I basically single mm -hmm. the 11 and go a little bit longer elsewhere. We'll see. We'll see if I have time and if I can make it all make sense without looking at my phone for too long. Well, yeah. So again, we'll go ahead and give you guys one more second to look at our discord pick five there. And then once again, there's Nick's ticket. We'll make a ticker for that later. If we both survive the first leg, <laughs> <laughs> um, but looking at the field we have here. So the number nine big tap is the current favorite. Um, are you kind of surprised to see that? I see. I mean, it's Asmussen and Juan. Um, who, uh, if I recall, Asmussen and Luan actually have a 67% win rate in the last 45 days. And then it's a little bit of a jockey upgrade, in my opinion, for the nine. Uh, definitely was up there in my top selections. Big tap. Three-year-old yep. Colt there. Yep. The nine probably going to be second choice based on the doubles. The nine and ten okay. are kind of similar numbers. So you figure one of those two will end up being your favorite. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the 9 and the 11 both make a good enough... You can make a case for either of them. And I kind of did, and then I kind of decided, yeah, but I really like... Um, what was it? There was something about that 9 that kind of scared me off. Um, it's been a maiden for nine starts and it didn't really get better that last time. So second out on at Turfway on synthetic is what kind of made me not really like this one. Um, and I didn't watch the replay, so maybe I'm missing something, but saved ground to the no avail and then throughout and then kind of finished 11th and had no chance while well, getting bet down to four to one. So maybe it comes back and does something different here but different yeah yeah i mean dropping down to a 5000 tag is probably the the biggest difference and probably the thing that you should be more concerned about mm -hmm. um it probably makes sense dropping in for this tag it's you know probably better than the rest of these and that's one that you should probably probably use um so maybe there's a ticket that i need to make real quick that uh throws at 11 on because i i didn't realize it uh it sorry the 9 uh, the nine, yeah, big time. Yeah, nine. Sorry, yeah. Um, so yeah, Ramrod, well, if, if you're in the Discord, you did see a four hundred ninety-two dollar ticket, which is not made because <laughs> we're not we're not, <laughs> we're not spending that much money on this. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's that's what I brought up. I think this is a no offense to Tyler Connor, but I do think this is a a pretty good jockey upgrade uh, to get the Axe Man aboard. Yep. So right. they are gonna... six minutes to post. So, so a little bit over than what the post time was supposed to be. I don't know if something happened earlier in the card <laughs> for that, but I'm kind of looking at odds, kind of have they shifted from morning lines here. It doesn't look too, too much has happened. Maybe the four going up to five to one is a little interesting. And then, yeah, yeah you mentioned the 11, the 11 price plummeting. Okay. Yeah, and that was actually Scott Shapiro's top pick. So I, I know he, well, he doesn't have that much power, um, but he normally is able to spot ones that are a little higher price that come down a little bit, which an eight to one down to seven to two and second choice at worst and favorite at best uh, kind of makes sense. Yeah. I'm also, so I, I do have a, a I'm gonna smaller let you talk for a minute while I uh, try to get this ticket in yeah. because now you've talked me into this one. Okay, Davey says he is on his way in right now. So we'll hopefully see him in a second so he can give his opinions before this race Ooh. goes off. Uh, as he gets on here, I did want to kind of talk about uh, another. So I'm, I'm not just playing a pick five tonight. Um, I'm also going to be playing an exacta box. 
starting this race. So for $12, I'm going to box uh, one for 911. So basically, just adding that one that I have from the pick five. So if that one gets up to win, well, darn it, we're out $192, but hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully the four comes in or something underneath. Well, maybe not anymore. He's now 92. Um, I'm also going to play a cheeky little super, a shoddy super, if you will, uh, which is a book. So if it hits, I will just show you the <laughs> ticket on screen because I just, I'm not going to type it out. I'm not going to try to say it. It's too many numbers. <laughs> I hope you got it in now. You didn't miss it like last time and you ended up not getting the right one in. So no, yeah, I don't know. I, I put in the, I had the numbers. I just didn't put it in right. Cause I was sitting here like trying not to <laughs> keep my head down. <laughs> I think um, that's what we're going to make Davey do is like, we'll just put our head down and he can talk and then it gives right, us Davey set, talk, like, yeah. 30 seconds. Well, we can actually get our bets in properly. So I did get this bet in. I'm trying to figure out which, uh, which banner are you using there that I can uh, make a new one in? Uh, so if you go under banners and daily, you can go all okay. the way down and gotcha. hit banner yep. and go ahead and type that yep. in there. Yeah. And so look, Hey, there he once, is. speaking yeah. of, Oh, here there's Davey. Let's get him in here. Oh, oh. nope. Okay. One of us will hit it. I'll click it. <laughs> you hit it. I'll, he's I'll he's my it. fantasy league partner. <laughs> hello, hello, guys. What's up? Hey. Hey, Davey. Long time no see. I know. I know. I had a long day. I had a track meet. Did pretty good. Had some good results. Now I'm ready for some ponies. Yeah. So what are your thoughts this first race? We have three minutes till post time. We mm -hmm. have a pick five ticket in. So on screen here, you're going to see the Discord pick five. So it's a collaborative effort between about four or five people. And then we have uh, Nick's pick five. So he's playing separately because we do have a little bit differing opinions there. Mm -hmm. So what, what are your thoughts on this race? On this race, uh, I, I do like the four uh, captain party. He, he's got the, the weight kind of knocked off. So that's going to help him out some. Uh, he, he just looks like he might have that kind of normal ability just to his, his average race could, could win this. And so if he performs, uh, I think he could run away with this. So um, I did not make a pick five ticket, uh, but I, when I was looking at it, I think he was going to potentially be my single this time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Car Ramrod brings up the, choice. yeah, brings up the two here. Uh, I <laughs> Spoiler alert, in my shoddy super. Uh, so I, I don't disagree with you here, Car Ramon. I just don't think – we'll see if he gets up to win. If he gets up to win, I'll just be a very sad shoddy. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so, one of the things I don't like about um, that horse would be that it's coming first time at Turfway, first time synthetic. I'll try to beat those ones, uh, even if they're coming off the turf. I, I like to play, I like to see one run on synthetic before I uh, mm -hmm. play them. So. Fair play. Okay, uh, so it says one minute to post. I thought they were about to walk into the gates here, but then they're now they're doing their little circle circle because it is the pick five that they uh, carried over. So they're probably nice. going to try to get some more of those in here. Yeah, they're um, going to let that one go for a little bit, I would imagine. Yeah. And don't forget, if you are, are, is anyone in the live chat alive in a pick six or anything? I personally did not play one. You had a nice start to the pick six if you're alive right now. 282,000 of new money into this pool. Mm -hmm. So you got a 390, almost 400,000, I would yeah. bet. Probably more when it finally goes. Well, and if the pick six doesn't hit tonight, tomorrow's mandatory yep. payout. So, mm -hmm. you know, in a way, are you kind of rooting for it to get hit tonight? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> since I'm not playing. <laughs> well, if it doesn't get hit, then it means that the pick five likely didn't get hit either. So there is a little bit of like, well, maybe they both roll and then we have a fun Saturday night. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be $192 poor. <laughs> but I'm using a $382 ticket the next time. 384. I'm oh. good at math. <laughs> Why'd it have to be payday? <laughs> <laughs> Do you play uh, Turfway much, Davey? Uh, more recently. Uh, I kind of started to last year after two fills, uh, had his win. I, I just liked him. Uh, and so after he, he won, I was like, all right, well, maybe I should kind of take a peek at Turfway every now and then. Uh, so it, it's not my. Uh, 
my top one, I'm definitely Del Mar kind of a guy. Uh, but I, I'm I'm trying to figure out Turfway. I think I'm gonna have some good luck at it. Yeah. I tell people all the time that yes, it's very random, but it's random because all 5k claiming races are random. The synthetic may be a little random, but it's yeah. more the the level of horse than anything else. The uh mm -hmm. the track plays relatively uh fair most days. So it's definitely one that I'm like, uh, eh, yeah, I see how people think it's uh, complete nonsense and it is, but all 5k claiming races are nonsense. So that's that's yeah. my uh, way of viewing <laughs> it. Sense. Yeah. Fair enough. Wow. 310 in the pool. Man. So I did add my other ticket that I'll pop in there just so I get credit for showing it prior. <laughs> yeah. To what, what'd you, what'd you do? Codes. So I just basically added uh, the nine and 11 in this race and then just cut down on other places and singled the 11 and 12 at the end. So mm -hmm. if the nine or the 11 win this race, um, my my hundred eight dollar ticket is dead, but my oh. twenty dollar ticket's alive for at least one more leg. So we'll see how good that is for me. Probably bad for me. No, that's the spirit. <laughs> I want to hear some positivity for these tickets you're playing. Yeah. Whenever I'm positive, they die immediately. You have to be negative. You have so to be negative. And then when they, they are hit, walking up to the gate right now, David, is there any play that you would play here? Not a uh, multi race, but exacto try win. Play uh, show? Let me see. I'm looking at the odds right here. Like I said, I, I like the four okay. um, and I'm not against the one either. So like mm -hmm. both of them are seven to two right now. So I wouldn't be against playing against uh, the favorite of the nine right now and playing a one four exact box. Done and uh, done. I do like my four a little bit better. So I, I would maybe <laughs> play a, a straight four one exacta um you know the the asmusen horse just i don't know i, I think it, it's it might just be slightly overhyped like three to one i was like i don't know if i really like that price on him even and now he's two to one uh so i, I just I, i'm kind of playing against him oh That's, uh, that was the way that i started this and then when we were talking I saw that the uh, nine was coming out of a 15 K claimer or maiden claimer mm -hmm. down to five. And I always feel like if you get Winchell thoroughbreds and Asmussen dropping down to five, they're like, somebody please take this horse. So, yes. So who has the best like, uh, feed? Who's going to be able to call this race or at Davey. least commentate Davey? <laughs> Obviously he hasn't done it. Um, yeah, I, I can. I love calling races. Um, Perfect. I just hope I'm not behind yours. <laughs> That's what happened last week. <laughs> let, me, let me go ahead and ask, how bad's my, my camera? I got a new camera. Uh, they are loading 13 right now. Oh, you're nope, fine. You look good. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Right, they're off. 13 left at the gate. <laughs> yeah, mine are still in the gate. So Okay, so 13 was left oh. in the gate. The two and the four are going out for the early lead. Uh, Pum Pumasano wow. is in front right now. Four got bet down to nine to five off a of seven to two. Yeah. Holy moly. So right now it's two uh two four three nine up front. The thirteen is still in the back, but has now caught up with the rest of the pack. So no longer at the gate. <laughs> uh the first quarter mile is uh two four point six two. Okay. Which is pretty good for uh five K baden claimers. That's a pretty mm -hmm. quick pace. Which I know I'm behind on you guys, uh, like I said. But the one, he's getting a pretty good pocket trip, it looks like. And then uh, the four is up there kind of near that pace. Royal Decadence has moved up to third. Uh, and it's kind of, well, no, now they're going the wrong direction. Here comes Big Tat, the nine. Coming up to hopefully pass either Captain Party or Palmasano here. So uh, Captain Party has now taken the lead from Palmasano. As they are starting to round the far turn. Come on, four. The, ooh, Jack the Bird, a 41 to 1, needs to, for our intents and purposes, F off right now. Uh, so uh, here comes the nine and the four battling it out up front. The number 11, 11 is outside. on the middle of the track and is looking good to come up and maybe grab it. Come on, it's four. It's going to be close between the four, nine, and 11. It's going to be a photo. It looks like the four, though. Looks like, looks the four like four, nine, 11. 
They just turned on to the stretch on my phone. So, (laughs) (laughs) well, it's it's a fun stretch ride. It is. To me, four nine eleven. I didn't catch who got fourth. One. The one. The one. Yeah, Yeah. hit that super. The one started going backwards, but uh, came back up for fourth. So, yep. Well, I should have played my pick five and singled that dang four. I'm shocked at that. uh, Just. uh, Price uh, came down it's the four. superfecta of dreams. <laughs> it's probably not going to pay 1080. That's probably going to pay like seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, I I cannot believe that he dropped to a, a nine to five there. Yeah, I thought we were about to get a steal at double seven to twos, but yeah, they the nine, he just swapped with the nine. It looks, yeah. like, it looks like that super was all favorites, so that's yeah unfortunate yeah, for my part. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it'll pay decent, but how much was your ticket? Oh, no. Uh, oh, dang it. Uh, they knew. <laughs> uh, Ramrod, isn't that the truth, that your deepest leg, a favorite, gets home? <laughs> I would say yeah. that looking at the will pace, at the double will pace, I missed the four being like the same. So 11 mm-hmm. was slightly lower, but the nine and four were basically the same. So. Mm-hmm. I would not have get like even now like why are two why is the four nine to five and the other two seven to two though that is uh, a wild difference so they definitely yeah. do on that one and I do believe there's nothing better on the internet than they knew because we never <laughs> talk about when they knew and it loses we only talk about when they knew and it's right so I, I like the consistency that is the internet it is my favorite part of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man all right so just to kind of recap uh we have both survived so the discord of course went four nine eleven so got that try and then nick you went one four so and four one four nine eleven so i got two tickets moving on so i'm on the Ooh. one four six ten on on both and the, the eleven thirteen on the expensive one so if i can hit it two times i i may get dinner tonight Oh, wow. Man, where are you eating? (laughs) Probably at my house with Top Robin. (laughs) Mortgage is due next week. (laughs) All right. So we're going to move on to race two here. Now, do you guys want to talk about race or race two, leg two? Uh, Do you want to talk about race five or do you want to kind of talk about some uh, derby prep action and then move on to that? Let's start with the derby prep action and then move into the race when it gets a little closer to post time. Sure thing. So we'll go ahead and I got to change screens. I'm not as fast as magic. Okay. All right. We'll we'll, we'll let it slide this (laughs) time. You'll forgive me. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Which one do you want to do first? You want to do. What do you guys want to do? You want to do Florida? I, I always say Oakland over her over Gulf Stream, but you know, I okay, fine. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do Oakland. We'll do Oakland. <laughs> okay, let's see if this looks all right. Huzzah! Okay, so looking at Oakland, which is the second to last race on the card that day, um, we have a field of 10 so far. I haven't heard anything about any scratches, um, so we'll see tomorrow morning if this is a st- still a full field of 10. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just realized there's an inquiry at Turfway, just FYI. Uh-oh. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't hurt you, Nick, because if the Is nine gets up here, <laughs> yeah. I, I would still be alive on the other side, but I, I'd prefer. It's true. Yeah. Just this, you know what? I'm just going to not look at it for a second. And then, <laughs> so when you guys look at this race, you see, of course, the, the Bob Baffert horse Muth, who is going to be the favorite in the race might be, well, I don't know. I've seen a lot of people behind Timberlake, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Muth will go off his morning line. What do you guys think? I agree. Yeah. Um, I kind of, uh, <laughs> Davey and I are going to be very biased for full disclosure to everyone listening. Uh, there's a horse named liberal arts in this race that is on our fantasy league team. I am super high on him. So I would be very disappointed if he didn't finish it at least third, um, which he has never not done. He's always finished in the money, all of his starts. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, he's a win contender. Uh, maybe I am just way too high on him and I'm just going to be sad when he gets third. But 
that's that's my pick for this race uh, using Timberlake underneath. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts, Davey? I think Muth is the class of the field. I mean, he's proved it time and time again. Uh, he, he's just a very good horse, very competitive. Uh, I heard was it was it Curtis uh, Manlow who's telling us that like shipping into Arkansas has kind of gone up in price. Uh, and it's just kind of mm. difficult to get in there. And so I think that's why they they held out for the richest Oakland race, the Arkansas Derby. Um, so I, I think he's coming here with a purpose and a, and a purpose to win. Um, mm. So I think the value is trying to get second place. Uh, and like you said, going to be a little biased, but I think liberal arts for the price and for the resume is that best opportunity at taking a shot. 15 to 1, first time off the layoff, ran a very, very close third, should have been second uh, in the Southwest. Lost to Mystic Dan, which McPeak currently does not have any of my trust anymore. Uh, so I don't know why I ever even believed in any of his horses. But uh, so now I'm, I'm, I'm tossing Mystic Dan. I, I'm going to, I'm not tossing Timberlake because I, I do think he's not bad. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think he's he's trifecta, superfecta worthy, uh, but I, I'm really I'm probably going to play a heavy exact move over liberal, liberal arts uh, mm -hmm. and just see what I can get out of that. Yeah. And Mystic Dan, I still stand that he he had a golden rail that day. That's where you wanted to be. That's mm -hmm. where he rode. He, it was rode beautifully. I think we'll see yeah. if he can he, if he can replicate that. We'll see. Um, mm -hmm. And then a note about Muth. He was supposed to be in the rebel. Um, so it would have been interesting to see how that race had turned out uh, with Timberlake versus Muth, but we're going to yeah. find out tomorrow. Um, Nick, what are your thoughts? Um, I think Muth is the most most likely winner. Um, I think JJ Hernandez coming in kind of shows the cards. Uh, JJ Hernandez is my favorite writer. He's my version of Flavian Pratt. Um, I think he's going to come in here and uh, at the very least, Muth is going to get the best ride of anyone on the card. I also don't think Muth is going to win. I'm going to play very heavily against him. He will not be in my win at all. I won't use him in any horizontals. I may use him second in the exact if I play it, which I will not. Um, I think that he's much better going that mile, mile and a 16th. And I think this mile and an eighth is going to be a little much for him. The missing the Rebel is very strange to me. A B Bafford horse not running since January 6th for kind of no reason. It, it's peculiar. It's a very, why is he this one running in here and not before? So I'm going to land on um, a dumb one that doesn't make any sense, but I want time for truth. If you go back and look at that allowance race, he ran a mile and 16th and was up against super, super fast fractions, was outside of a horse that was going way too fast and he kept on. So he was bet down to two to one in, in you know in an allowance race. It was a halfway decent allowance race, but I'm uh I think he has a legitimate chance of basically going gate to wire in this race. I don't think there's enough speed to really scare me off of him. Um I think Timberlake is also very good, and I think Muth is obviously very good, but I like them both underneath. And then my my selfish uh derby future pool money bets that were way too much and way too dumb uh it's time for truth dimatic and imperial gun and because of you shoddy i have liberal arts for way more money than i should for that, that <laughs> stupid, stupid but those are the no refunds yeah, no <laughs> refunds um but yeah i have you know all of those i really like um at least to hit the board so that's kind of the way i'd be playing it at least in a horizontal way i'm going to do uh three dimatic four time for truth five liberal arts nine Missy Dan, 10 Imperial Gun, and probably Timberlake too, because I'm not that stupid, but I am kind of dumb. So we'll see how that actually plays itself out. But I think Imperial, this race is more wide open than it than it looks like. Imperial Gun is one that hurts a little bit. And I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> uh, Curtis, we will, we will talk UAE Derby probably after race three or leg three. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to stick around and give your your hot takes on that, definitely <laughs> stick around for that. All right. You guys maybe want to talk about the next race a little bit, or do you have any other thoughts on the Arkansas Derby at all? Um, 
Yeah, who on the on the Aspieson side? He's got three horses in this race. Mm -hmm. What do you what are your thoughts on all of them? Because like we had Imperial Gun on our fantasy league. He I thought he broke his maiden very impressively at a mile and a sixteenth, but then he came back in that allowance and got beat by Seize the Gray, who was carrying Which... less weight than him. Two of the three horses that beat him carried less weight. Then Seize the Gray came back and ran a pretty good race at Turfway. Mm -hmm. But that field, I don't know if if it was any good because Northern Flame ran at great uh, Rebel Stakes, and then where was he in uh, the Jeff Ruby? So yeah. just trying to Imperial Gun has the breeding to go the distance, uh, which is you know what originally you know reason why we claimed him. We thought, oh, he's going to be he'll he'll be all right. Um, yeah, I was very disappointed in, in that allowance race. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. stepping up against winners was kind of hard first out, and he's really taking another step up here. So it's kind of yeah. difficult for me to put him on top. I definitely could see him underneath. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Informed Patriot is a is a horse. I just I don't know how to read this horse because his Sunland was horrible. No, no. <laughs> horrible. Yeah. De deserved well, 30 to I one. You, I was interested in him in the Sunland Derby. Mm -hmm. And then the effort he gave, I was like, I don't trust this horse. He picks up Santana. You know, he's he, he we don't even get T Gaff on any of Asmussen horses, and he's been trying to ride like almost all of them, it feels like. And so with Asmussen getting uh Esquivel, Santana, and Torres, for me, I'm thinking Torres might be the best out of those three. But I am I am just yep. not in love with Dymatic. Um, I think he's the logical one to maybe take a step forward for the yep. Asmussen. Uh, but man, like I'm an Asmussen fan, and he's not making it easy. Yeah, I mean that. The, I love Dymatic after that maiden win, and you know he was nine to five, and he rode the rail until he got to the top of the stretch, and then kind of moved out and kind of beat whatever he beat. I think mm -hmm. the rebel was maybe a step too quick. Whereas if you were in an allowance race there, he may have taken a better step, but his speed figure improved enough. And I think speed figure moved up enough because he's in the rebel and not in an allowance race. If he were in an allowance race, I don't think he gets that big of a number because you know, the par of that race is going to be higher. But I right. think we were talking about breeding. It's a gun. He's a gun runner out of a tap at mayor. It's a Winchell homebred. Oh man. If, if he's not, a halfway decent horse i'd be shocked so this right. feels like one of those races that like you say if he takes a step forward which he has every right to do and torres is a good enough rider i i really like that idea of him stepping up here and so he's he's definitely one that i think has a shot same i mean i'd say basically exactly the same thing about imperial gun except boy was that allowance race bad <laughs> like he was bet right. down to four to five and and looked worse than yeah it was one. like he was bad yeah, it just looked like he had nothing in it. Like yeah. he, he just ran in place. And it was a, you know, he was what gone 55 days. So a little long, but for Asmussen, that doesn't seem like that big right. of a like, deal. I would think he'd still be somewhat fresh enough to to come back and run a, a step forward of a race. I, if anything, it was, it like looked like a regression to me. Yeah. Um, I, the, the interesting thing to me is that Keith Asmussen isn't writing any of the Asmussen. He's writing just steel. Having uh, D. Wayne Lucas have Keith Asmussen ride him is weird. I mean, no, I know he he Lucas won on ride, Lemon Muffin, right? Um, and who, that's he's also like, won. Yeah, and he rides for him enough. Like it's not like a favor. It doesn't seem like it seems like he actually likes him as a rider. And I think Keith has been a good rider, but of all the horses, like that's the one that he's like, "Yep, that's where I want to go." And I hate playing that uh, jockey bingo of like. Oh, he yeah. went here, so that's the one. Musical that's chairs. Like, what, yeah, <laughs> when his dad's the trainer, you kind of feel like, well, when not he pick one of those ones? As yeah, opposed we, we, have, to we don't have any ass one? boys to root for. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> so, like you say, I, I, I've talked myself off of Muth because I want to talk myself off of Muth. He's gonna win for fun. It's gonna just. I know. Be a I just. I don't want him to. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the four did stay up, by the way. So we are. Yeah, so we are we are all good. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, we will bring back See if up you can find the. Your tab. Nice yeah, I have on. like five five different <laughs> windows pulled up for this. So you you hush. 
<laughs> like like Sylvia said earlier, that we cannot compare ourselves to the Magic Mike show. I would tell you that when I was doing it before, I would put all of the screens up there and have them all on the bottom and then just pull them up when you want them. And so it's mm -hmm. a little bit easier to find. But you can only have one share screen at a time. So you have to stop uh, share. Uh, I, they must, they, they're they quicker at what they do. So they, they have a probably better way to do Stupid stuff. magic. Stupid magic. <laughs> at least I'm not muted right now. That's fair. <laughs> that was a good scroll one. down. I don't think either of us have done that. All we've done is mess up buttons. But yeah, mess up buttons, not go live when we're supposed to, all sorts of other things yeah. nobody else saw. <laughs> yeah. So looking at this race, it is still a field of 12. Uh, even Nope, sorry, a field of 11. There's three scratches, three, uh, yeah. one of them being the alternate entry there of Lucky Lesson. Uh, I've had number 11, Anna, on top with four, eight underneath. Um. There's a horse in here, uh, CC Grand, which is not on our Discord pick five. That is on your pick five, Nick. Go ahead and tell me why we are going to regret this. Well, it's my top pick. Um, <laughs> I I feel like this race, as with you know every race that's ran for seventy five hundred dollars for claiming races, you can kind of throw a dart and make a case for. I like the five to one morning line that's now currently sitting at 16 to one. So I'm going to have to look at this will pay and see if I'm getting anywhere near that. Cause that may just be a win bet for me here and call it a day. Um, yeah, <laughs> I really like the claim off of Leister, Stephen Leister claimed it for say, uh, Larry Smith claimed this one. He did not, but somebody did. And now he's running it. He's really good off the claim. Um, I really like the way that time form gives ratings based on, first time off the claim and he's very highly rated there two races back this uh cc grand the number 10 broke her maiden her 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 maiden um last out uh, throw that race out and if you go back to that race that she broke her maiden i think it's pretty good um getting you know second time versus winners i think there's a step up to be had there three-year-old still developing only their third start as a three-year-old so there's enough here to make a case for i'm not making a big very strong case for any of them because i'm four and six deep on my ticket so it's definitely not like i have this like oh that's the that's the winner no question but uh there was value there to make it worth a worth a play yeah um I'm doing a, just so everyone knows in the Discord, if you're listening, I'm doing a pick four, singling the 10 here in this race. <laughs> just a seven so, in your face. <laughs> yes. So if the 10 comes in, we're still alive <laughs> on something. <laughs> but if the 10 doesn't come in and the 11 comes in, we're, we're both still alive, I think, right? Yeah. So. The pick, the early pick five is not paying all that well. The four is paying $647. It's been so, pretty chalky. There's yeah. Been, there hasn't been really any big prices coming, which, you know, means the bomb is going to come in in this sequence of yeah. roulette noises. <laughs> <laughs> Davey, where did uh, you end up here? Um, So I'm, I'm a little bit all over the place, uh, but I think I'm going to fall towards, let me scroll up here, to the it factor, number four. Um, he's dropping off of two allowance races that, that he was in, uh, you know, just, just kind of a bigger class. And the, the first one, if you go two back, uh, he, he finished third and that allowance wasn't too bad. He kind of held up, uh, he was close to the, to the pace and the, the whole race and he just kind of held on. Um, then his most recent race, he got out a little bit harder, still kind of just settled off the pace, but just couldn't keep up. And so I think dropping into the, the, this kind of class i just look at all these other horses and i just don't know if they've got that kind of same ability uh to at least be that consistent yeah. kind of going along with the four of the last race like has that consistency the average looks like it it, it can compete and takes any kind of a, a step forward kind of like that that race two back in that allowance race could be could be awfully impressive you draw a line to the last race yep. then he finished third first and fourth in his most recent three so yeah and you uh, see i like that ten, the most you see that 10 to 1 morning line currently down to five to two so other people might be seeing the same thing as you there yeah um and uh there's a this horse is coming from belterra which this trainer has a 40 percent win rate 
doing mm -hmm. that move. So not a bad choice there. My, I had second choice. So. Yeah. My, I threw it on because uh, it was Scott Shapiro's top choice. And he mm -hmm. loves these horses that come off of turf into a synthetic race like this. He plays them all the time. Um, so I, I, like I've said, I don't know a million times, Scott Shapiro is the best. So I, I will follow him around and if he has one that I don't like, but that is too <laughs> long of a layoff for me that made me a little nervous about this one. I don't like those ones coming first off a layoff. Now, first time at four, there's a case to be made and has ran on at Turfway a couple of times early on. Didn't win, but ran decent enough races that, um, I, I see the case to be made for that one. So I'm glad that I at least have it in a ticket because there's definitely, uh, when it wins for fun, go, like say jumping from ten to one morning line to seven to two, it's like eh, yeah, they they knew they knew way before, and they they may know the entire time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> my second pick is the thirteen. Actually, uh, eight to one oh, morning line, to six to one, dropped back up or bumped back up to seven to one. Uh, I, I think kind of a similar thing. I, I don't love the outside post. Mm -hmm. Um. But but those speed figures are, are pretty consistent. You go back a little bit further, uh, he he's got those those numbers that are competitive with this kind of claiming uh, group. Now you go back a little bit, he lost to oh that's Lucky Anna. So I'm getting names confused. There's an Anna, <laughs> and then there's a Lucky Lesson. So yes. he did not lose to Lucky, <laughs> or he did, but not in this race. So yep. Uh, I, I, I'm i looking forward to it. I mean, one win, two seconds, three thirds. So it's not amazing. Six out of 15 starts uh, on the board. Um, but just looks like this is one of those those races where the class isn't very good. There's a lot of long shots, I think. Yep. Um, and if they run their decent race, uh, then they can be competitive with it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I included the 13 as well. And I think it's if you like you say, if you go back the last two or three races, three races for sure, mm -hmm. run any of those and the rest of them run not their best race. And this one should win the outside post going a mile isn't going to be the worst spot for him. And because she likes to kind of come from further back, I think you can take her towards the rail, get her kind of mid pack and then make the run. Um, mm. late. I think there's there's definitely a case for that in, you know, 7 to 1 currently, and DRF tells me they project it to be 7 to 1, so I really like that price there. She seems like a, one that really fits. Yeah. So, I will, so I want to talk about my 11 that I have here. Um, so, Anna is exiting a key <laughs> claim race, so she finished third. The first, <laughs> second, and fourth place horses won next out. And the horse that won that race is actually in the next race, the number 10, She Will Ghost You. So I think mm -hmm. it's uh, you need to pay attention to how Anna runs here. If Anna wins, uh, mm -hmm. that She Will Ghost You is very flattered, right? So uh, pay attention to how this race goes for the next out. In fact, if you wanted to play a double, I guess the double prices would then just be sh shattered. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming because people will probably think the same as me there. So um, the one thing I'll tell you is that that was um, Anna's coming out. That race that she ran there was the one that they canceled the card, the card right after, after the fifth race. It was so, um, so it was <laughs> so snowy that track played like ice. So mm -hmm. there is something there where. She well, look where Anna is from. <laughs> there you go loves the ice everyone loves the, loves ice. the ice right probably thrives in the cold i heard horses <laughs> love the cold in general so if you get a horse that that is already from the cold of the cold <laughs> one thing i thought that was funny about this race look at the all the different weights in this mm. Like it from 125, then you got people who are at 118 or 115, <laughs> 113, and they all got like yep. little weight breaks, and it, it's just like, what is going on here? Yep. Good old yeah, turf. Good old turfway. So we still have four minutes to race five. Uh, we know we have so, uh, three alive pick fives, um, two with Nick, one with me in the Discord. Uh, I'm going to be playing uh, a. Two dollar win place on the eleven Anna. Again, I'm a two dollar better. I'm not going to be paying twenty dollars for anything. Um, 
I say with a one hundred ninety-two dollar thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I was going to do an exacta box because that has been great for me. Uh, this, these doing these, I'm going to do a four, eight, ten, eleven exact box. Nice. So kind of pretty much all the horses we talked about except for the thirteen. So I I'll talk real quick about the three and why I don't like it. One race on the page that uh, may make it playable, which was two back going long for the first time. I'm a little scared of that one trying to get a mile. So having it ran six for a long six and a half, the last however many um, go, go Gisha, maybe she can get the distance, but it'll be the first time she's tried it. So I I've played against her for that reason. So yeah, exactly. me makes sense. If she actually likes to go longer then you're going to get paid handsomely for it yeah yeah finished second two back it's a lot of uh i've seen i haven't seen anyone post about her yet but rose darling does anyone kind of have, have any thoughts on rose darling the number six who's currently i do mad horse i mean it's coming from the uh where are we at the the humphreys barn you know they're they're not bad uh he he's got the speed for it, but I I just I don't know it, it doesn't click for me. It kind of looks like a horse that is just placed a little awkwardly. Uh, okay. So because of that, I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to try to beat him. He was she was my second choice, so I'm I have her on both my tickets. That maiden claimer two back. Uh, that race is probably pretty bad. So then mm -hmm. came back and ran in a 15K maiden claimer last out and didn't run a step. So if you throw that one out, then she's only won one, one race and only beat bad horses and was a heavy favorite. So I probably should not have included her, but the ticket's already in. So let's make a case that she's good for the, some reason. The eight looks go with gorgeous that. on the track, just from the track feed. The Doug O'Neill horse. Yeah. I'm, I wasn't sure if I liked that horse or not. Like, I love Doug O'Neill. Um, you know, Del Mar kind of a guy. But this Golden Storm horse, I, I feel like it's uh, – you know, let me just pull it up real quick on my phone. The, you know, the the speed figures, like, the, those figs just don't match up. Like, the top one, yeah, I got a 99 on one at Keeneland and a 100K turf maiden. But that just – Looks like an overhyped race, was seventh, didn't do great, but hasn't been anywhere near that. Um, other than that, a 76 is the best fig. And it, it just, I feel like they're putting him here to really try to just get rid of him. Oh, yeah. In, in a throw. drop, you know, dropping out of uh, just broke her maiden, now running for 7,500. I think I'm with you. Is like, Yes, there's a case to be made, and when you like you say when you get Doug O'Neill here, Doug O'Neill has been very good. It hasn't ran a whole bunch; ran 24 horses at Turfway and winning at 13. percent So basically doing yeah. Doug O'Neill things. Um, yeah, it does feel like there's a there's a world where she wins, but at what five to one currently and looking like four to one based on um, doubles. I I would yeah. say. I'm going to leave off as well, but Kevin likes her. So Kevin has his double that he's playing, which uh, I like the, I like that one, especially if the 13 and then, and then the eight would be perfect for me, Kevin. So let's, let's root that one home. Let's All right. It. Final decision. What do you got? Oh, that three does not look happy going into that gate. Uh, sorry. A final thought. I have the 11 over eight, uh, over eight, four. All right. 10, 13. I'm going to go. Four over 13. Uh, and then I'll, I'll throw in your 11 there. Okay. All right. So we're sorry, Nick. We're against your 10. <laughs> That's all right. There, there's a plenty of cases you made against that 10. So I have plenty of other 15 to 1 there. right now. Maybe I'll put there a win bet on him real quick. Got to hurry. Got to hurry. Got to hurry. Oh, speed shows 9 to 1. So he's coming down. He's coming down. Yeah. Are we moving the needle that much? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, they're off. Pretty even beginning. The two, the nine is going to be going off for the lead there. So as they go into the first turn, it's going to be the two, nine. Who is that other one? One, stupendous. 
oh my gosh, the nine is 96 to one. Yeesh. What did you guys think about that one? I know we didn't talk about him. I, you know, Nothing he was probably next off of my ticket. You know, mm-hmm. if he takes a step forward and he beats me, he pro- then then that happens. Uh, but probably one of the more likely ones to at least take a step forward and hit the board. Yeah. Then that was the last one on my ticket for that exact reason. So I went so the, 10, 6, 13, 1 on my. One and two are nose apart and they just went a quarter mile in 24, 18. Okay. The one so currently get, has about half length in front of the two, Floris. And a 48 second half. So that's it fast, is, but not. Is moving up on the fast. inside with Anna coming up on the outside of the nine zero click. Anna and zero click are about to roll by the one in the four, or sorry, the one in the two here. So right now it is zero click and Anna. Anna takes lead on the outside. Trying to look for any horses coming from the back here. It looks like the eight Golden Storm is trying to range up. Anna, pretty strong up front. Looks like Anna might pull away here. Anna by two, three, four, widening coming, lengths. But yeah. Ooh, look 11, at you, shoddy. Eight, ten, one. Hey, 11, we eight, got 10. it. Hey, I want to call out. Anna was Aaron's free pick on the site. So Aunt Aaron had Anna on top. Heck yeah. Let me double check to see if he got the exact two. Who was so that guys, third? third? The 10 was the CC was Grand. Third. Which was the pick coming. four that I played, everyone. Hey, we're still alive, but kind of wish I didn't play it now. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Luckily, it was only like $12. So. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's see. Aaron, if you guys go to the site and you go to the free picks, you can see his top pick for each race on every track every day. So for race five, he had 11, 8, 4, 7. So it came in 11, 8. If you played the exacta, looks like you had a 9 to 2 coming over a 6 to 1. So that should be nice. pretty decent. Mm-hmm. So attaboy, Aaron. Yeah. I'm going to just yell at myself real quick here because I am a moron. I played the one, four, six, 10, 11, 13 in my, Mm -hmm. in my big ticket. And in my, in my little ticket, I, uh, Mm. I left the 11 off because I am dumb. So I, Hey, you're still alive. I'm still alive, but, uh, only in one of them in that, that's infuriating. So I was just looking at my ticket and it was like, Oh my God, how did I do that? Cause I was like, I like the 11 more than the four, but I played the four, not the 11. What is wrong with me? And I apparently dismissed it. So, ouch. Right. So, I'm happy. Got that win place bet in, got the exacta, and we are alive. Two, two out of three pick fives are alive. Let's go. Going into leg number three. Speaking of, let's talk Florida Derby. Ooh, okay. And yeah, we don't have any inquiries this time, so we don't have to be sitting here sweating a little bit (laughs) on that. (laughs) Yeah, so let me go ahead and get Florida Derby pulled up here. Share screen, goal stream. Make sure there's no ads playing. How does that look on question. Why am I the only person on this wonderful Friday enjoying myself? What do you mean enjoying yourself? Oh. With an ice (laughs) cream. (laughs) <laughs> uh, technically, nice I'm still at work. Um, oh. so I'm just using <laughs> this. So. Uh, I'm, I'm only at work because they have better internet than me. So, um, And they don't care if I stay here until 9 o'clock at night. All right. Uh, I mean, I have water. There you go. Yeah. yeah. We can pretend we're right here. <laughs> I will go throw some... Uh, vodka in a cup and i'll pour my water on top of it there you go all right <laughs> yeah fire up some ball shots <laughs> yeah car ram road no <laughs> um all right yeah so florida derby it's field of 11 uh once again just like the arkansas derby i haven't heard of any early defections um We're going to see if Fierceness continues his trend of win-loss, win-loss, or was he exposed 
in the uh, Holy Bowl last out. Um, I kind of don't like his post here. Uh, Hades being on the inside of him means I think Hades is going to take the lead. Uh, you're going to see some horses press like Ladombro, um, Fierceness. You know, we can see Can Rate. He, he doesn't have to have the lead. I think he, uh, it's been mentioned several times. I think he's, he's a small horse and he's just intimidated by, by a bigger horse uh, down the stretch. So, what are, what is everyone else's thoughts? So, I am on Fierceness. If you mm -hmm. watched the last workout, it was great. I don't know anything about workouts, but he looks like he's grown a little. He looks like he's gotten faster and he looks really good. And this field mm -hmm. is really bad. So, I mean, there's plenty of, you know, I, I try to make a case for all sorts of horses in the Arkansas Derby and, you know, knowing full well that Muth is going to win. Yeah. In this one, I can see you can make your case for any of them. And I've heard people make cases for basically all of them. Fierceness is really good. And yes, he had a bad uh, run at the Holy Bowl, but he was off for three months. Now being off for two months, I think Pletcher has him cranked and ready to fire. So I'm I'm all over fierceness. So I will leave and go get myself some vodka and be right back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um the horse that I'm I I'm well, I'm off fierceness. Like I can't, I don't trust him. And you know right. what? If he wins and rolls like he did in the Breeders' Cup, so then be he'll it. He'll get last in the Derby. Yeah, <laughs> I um, I got some faith in Conquest Warrior. I I really he, he hasn't done anything wrong. When you look at that race where he broke his maiden, uh, like <laughs> yeah, he broke horribly, but it was amazing yeah. that he was able to get up and he bit what was a beat Antiquarian. Um, who, you know, last out you saw kind of kind of had a rough beginning. And I think, you know, he got fifth, I believe, in the Louisiana Derby. But um, some long shots that I like here. Uh, Irish's dream really intrigues me uh, as why they're here. Um, and, you know, if they can kind of transform that form from turf to, to dirt, uh, I think might be a very interesting closer. Uh, then you have to look at Hades, the horse that really has done nothing wrong, is undefeated. Uh, just you're not going to get nine to one on him. Uh, I was really happy to have him that day, but I I don't know at the price that he's going to probably go off at, which is probably what he, the morning line is. I think Fierceness is going to go off as a clear favorite, but yeah. um, he's one that you know I, I'm going to have on my tickets. Uh, yeah, he'll definitely be on all the, the horizontals for me. Yeah. Um, and then there is the horse Bayless out, the other Pletcher in this race that, you know, you saw you saw in the Breeders' Cup, Irad hopping on, noted, and that was a mistake. Uh, but I'm wondering maybe about this Bayless out horse here. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Ron? Uh, Malathot. At the moment, yes. Um it's coming down to the wire, though. <laughs> so uh, I have the expectation to be there next week. So a uh, week from now, I should be flying in. I'm planning on be there Friday. Ooh, you got your drink? Huzzah. Huzzah. Oh, Grey Goose. It was a present, I mean, and it's almost yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not a vodka drinker, so I uh, ended up there. So then I mixed okay. it with all of my fancy seltzer waters. I got, I got all sorts of stuff going on over here. I'm going to knock something over. My wife's going to kill me, but you know. <laughs> hey, what doesn't kill well, me? I mean, if, if you hit the pick five, you can drink as much as you want. <laughs> I'll tell my wife I said that, that you said that. Yeah. Yeah. Be a lot back on. Another horse, though, that kind of gave a door knock a little bit. All he, I mean, you can argue to door knock really like, was he really being pushed that race? I think Ladombro is an interesting one to use underneath. You know, and if he gets third or second, he would make the Derby gate, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even maybe even fourth. I can't remember how many points he has right now off the top of my head. but uh, He um, would have gotten 25. So, yeah, I think even yeah, fifth he may get in, depending yeah. on how it all so, shakes mm -hmm. out. There's some interesting Derby implications in this race. Because, you know, if Fierceness doesn't get top three, he might get knocked out. It depends no, on who wins. Isn't he you in? think so? I thought he was in. Let me Does let me double 35? check before I yeah. You keep okay. talking, I'll double check. 
I think he I, has 30, he, 35 he has points for the Breeders' Cup. And then if he got third in the uh, – what do you get third in? The third in the uh, Holy, Holy, Bowl. Holy Bowl. He would be at 35, I think. Yeah, yeah he's at 36 currently. 36. So, okay, yeah, yeah, so he might be fine. I yeah, think 30 it, might be enough for you to at least get alternate entry. So It certainly yeah. seems like it this year, especially depending on what uh, the Bafferts end up doing. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I was always yeah, under the impression, true. like I had this big fear that Baffert was going to just send him to everywhere and just take all of the points. And I had just mm -hmm. had like, oh, nice. I was running in at the at Aqueduct, just taking the points because he can and Muth <laughs> going and taking points and just being like, oh, yeah, you just need 15 points to get in the Derby this year because Baffert has all of them. And unfortunately, he didn't do that because, you know, Rich Strike got in with like 18 points, but yep. then last year you had to have at least like 41 to get in. Mm -hmm. And then with mm -hmm. him taking up all those points, it's looking like maybe mid 30s uh, is a pretty confident pool. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see. I think you figure you have uh, three races this week and three races next week, all worth 100 points. And then with the 100, you also get 50. So as long as, you know, ones that are in the top 20 currently keep hitting the board like that, you won't have too many big jumps. And yeah. it'll bring the bottom up some. But I, I think that's kind of where you'll end up is that you'll have a higher higher minimum to get in. But you always get defections. You always get scratches. You always get ones that end up not going. So I yeah. think you need top three in these last races, I think, are not necessarily assured in, but I think they're pretty close. Yeah. My favorite um, of all of this is that McVeigh, who is still a maiden, is 19th in the, uh, or sorry, he has 19 points and he's 25th on the uh, Kentucky Derby leaderboard as wow. we speak. And he's never wow. won a race. So, could you imagine a maiden winning the Derby? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> be the best. Uh, there's It'd also. Be better a maiden from Japan. Yeah, Rich, um, <laughs> Rich Strike got in. Oh. I'll click it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> we both click at the same time again. <laughs> I'm going to click it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. He was uh, number 22, right? Or was he number 24? He was 21. 21. 21. 21. Nailed it. Just like I yeah. said. You've got in like the day before because of a, right. a late scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and then you also have to, and we'll talk about UAE um, probably next, next race in between, but um you know, the top two in the UAE could come to the Derby, for all we know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can't really just say, oh, there's one Japan horse, one other horse from across the pond there. Well, and then you mm -hmm. also have the Japan horse OT password. Yeah, T.O. password. T.O. password. Again, mm -hmm. nailed it. Good thing I got the vodka. Close That'll enough. definitely help. Um, but that one's coming, <laughs> it sounds like. So at this point, you got to figure there's only 19 spots available. So... Yeah. That would Minimum, be, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I guess if you include the alternate entries, yeah, you're right. Um, and then you never know. There could be a horse like Mandarin Hero um, that comes into the Santa Anita Derby, which I haven't heard that happening, um, if that's happening. But um, so another Japan horse that a bunch of people were kind of hyped up on is Amante Bianco. And it sounds like he's staying over in Japan for the Triple Crown, the Dirt Triple Crown over there. Um, so... Probably won't see see that horse over. Uh, T.O. Password's an interesting horse. I I really don't know much. I don't know much about him, so I have to. That, I would have to look at him. Yeah, that. Uh, for, I, yeah. I watch. Sorry, I watched that last race he ran, and mm -hmm. if that's what he's gonna do, please everybody bet the Japan horse because they're definitely going mm -hmm. to win a race. But that horse did not look good at all, and yeah, made very. Very weak fractions, and again, I'm assuming that you know fractions are pretty comparable, and the track was playing the way you know I expect tracks to play, but looked mm -hmm. pretty pretty bad if we're being honest. So um, I'm hoping that that one comes and gets bet because people think a Japan horse is going to win. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. What were your well, thoughts on? Race. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Oh. Uh, I like you said. Like I don't trust Kirshner as 100. percent Um, obviously, like he's got the ability to to win this race and maybe even dominate it if he shows up uh so definitely horizontally i'm gonna have him on there i i also was thinking bail us out uh that arad ortiz 
Pletcher combo. You know, he, he's coming in here 15 to 1. He's getting the three post, so that, that's not bad. It's the, the thing that really gets me is when you look at the, the competition, like you can make a case for everybody, but that means either everybody's good or bad or inconsistent. Frankie's Empire, I'm tossing. Hades, I think he fired his best shot. Like that was his third off, you know, maiden allowance. Then he did that and he looked like he fought his butt off. Like mm-hmm. you know, I'd have some more slight improvement. But I, I just that looked like it was it. Like he was really pushing. Yep. Uh, Grandma the first. Who? Uh, real matcha. <laughs> I, I don't hate him, uh, because I'm a fan of Castellano. He did me really good last year. <laughs> uh, my wife actually picked uh Mage to win the Derby because she liked Castellano, and then same with Archangelo at the Belmont. So what the heck? That. <laughs> Uh, and then I had National Treasure in the Preakness. So, <laughs> um, Ladombro, like you said, uh, he he was pretty good. Showed a, showed a good fight against Dornock. Kind of the similar thing to to Hades. Like, does he have it in him to take another step forward and fight like that again? Uh, Catalytic. Let me let me pull a magic and say that's Safi Jusif. Uh, <laughs> Seminole Chief, the Florida bred Joel Rosario. You know he's maybe got a chance to hit the board. You know, I don't hate him. Uh, the town directly next to where I'm from is Seminole. So it, it kind of, and I'm a Chiefs fan. So that's like a double combo. <laughs> um, but uh, Joel Rosario, let's talk about consistency, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I, when I bring it down to it, this next horse, Conquest Warrior, consistency. Room for improvement and has shown that he looks like he can have that improvement. Um, he's he's a big horse, which I like. And he gets uh, Jose aboard. I like Suge. Solid combo. And, and his odds, I think Fierceness is going to try to, you know, pull some of that money again. I'm really thinking bail us out is not going to be 15 to 1. No. I think he's going to drop single digits. Everyone's going to yep. see that combo. Uh, and they're going to be like, they're going to look at this field and be like, you know what? 5 to 1. Uh, he might even be favored over Hades. So, uh, but Conquest Warrior, I, I do like him a lot. I think he's got one of the best chances uh, to win this. He yep. kind of reminds me of We the People, but better. You know, he took kind of the same approach. He broke his maiden, won an allowance, uh, and then he stepped up into the Arkansas Derby. That was just a little bit over his head. This horse has shown that, like, he it, it's probably not going to be over his head. He's going to be competitive. So the one thing that I saw about Conquest Warrior that kind of had me a little bit on the fence with him was that that uh, his first race over at Aqueduct where he ran third and lost by nine lengths, he had no Lasix. And the next two, he was on Lasix. And so I'm not one of those like, oh, Lasix, it does this, that, the other thing. I don't know anything about anything. I'm dumb. But I am yeah. a little concerned about coming off Lasix. I, both those races are very good. The mm-hmm. mile and an eighth win an allowance mm-hmm. race. He was three to five. I don't think, I mean, we all, I, yeah. I think we know that Merritt's not very good. So I don't know that he was beating much, but he at least makes sense in this race. But I'm I'm a little against because of that. That was my my big yeah. thought against Conquest War, and I do think he's going to get over bet. Yep, I, I hear you on that. I think that they really wanted to take a, a traditional derby route and just go Lasix free. Um, but that just worries me. Like with how good he's done on Lasix, it makes me think that, that that first race he finished third, but it not that he got injured, but that it it was just a lot to ask for him first time out. And so they just were like, All right, let, let's back this up. We'll run him on Lasix. That's why he hasn't been in a derby prep yet, because they're making sure he's he's ready. Um, but again, it could be exactly what you said, and he's perfectly not capable of this because yep. he doesn't have the Lasix, kind of like Cyclone Mischief. Yep. Um, but he also had Dale Romans as a uh trainer. So all right <laughs> for that guy's future. Um oh, no. then Iris is green. <laughs> Iris is green. You know, it's definitely an interesting horse. I'm not against him. Uh, in my eyes, he, he's going to have to take a pretty big step forward uh, if he wants to win this race. I don't think it's going to be difficult for him to take a step forward and hit the super, maybe even the try. 
So when I come down to it, I'm still deciding uh, between Conquest Warrior and Fierceness. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think it out more. I do think Bayless out maybe is gonna have that best opportunity to to step forward and, and show us what he's made of, and maybe push these other guys to to have to perform and not just be average to get these points. Yeah. One of the things mm-hmm. about Irish's dream that I find interesting in going to the turf isn't always that the horse necessarily likes the turf as much as they run longer distances on the turf. I don't know that this one wants to go long. I don't know Jess's dream nor smart Kiara or Lionheart, which is the damn sire. Um, but Lionheart is good. So maybe they wanted to go long with this one and maybe that was the best they could do going along was that race. So um, it's also named after the breeder and the owner. So Iris Koto is the breeder and the owner and they named it after herself, um, which is always fun because maybe it's good and maybe it's not very good. And they're just putting it here mm-hmm. because of that. And we spent way too much time. Sorry. Talking about a 30 to one shot that probably has no chance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's got a decent chance. Wasn't it? Wasn't this also a Magic's horse that he was interested in? Was Iris's dream? One um, of the dudes. To him. Yeah, I can't remember who who was into that one. Um, you guys want to move back into the the race that's going off here in about six minutes? Always. Yes, I will always. always talk Turfway over Gulfstream. Because who doesn't love, uh, you know, what are we at now? Race six, uh, you know, eight K maiden cl- or eight K claimers. Like that. That's what racing needs more of. Is is this race? <laughs> Where did you end up, Davy? Man, this race is all over the place. Um, sure is. Let me look at it one more time before I make yeah. up my mind. So sure. I ended up on the eight lunar ice. Uh, which is 92 morning line currently three to one um, looks like you're probably the favorite uh, the oh, one lady mm-hmm. Hamilton may be the favorite well oh, and the tens taking some money too so yeah. yeah I like I like the eight coming out back to back second places running a mile and a mile and a 16th in higher class than this uh, 12 and 16 K claimers ran i love time form i will say this all the time time form uses a race rating which the last three races last four races last five races that this one's coming out of is much higher than this mm-hmm. race um and i feel like that alone is a reason to take her um and she also ran really well on those races whereas if you look at the 10 she will ghost you coming out of some bad races like an 80 and 81 race rating when she won don't get me wrong but her uh, speed figures were much lower so um maybe coming off you know third off a layoff maybe she has a chance here to be better but i i went heavy on the eight and i also used the one but um i'll throw it back to you davy to see or shoddy i know you know what you are after what who'd you play here shoddy on your ticket uh so yeah i have i had a lot of picks in here that actually ended up scratching out of the race which is always unfortunate um I, I've had 10 She Will Ghost You on top here. Um, and I kind of mentioned why last out that, you know, I would be really watching uh, Anna in the last race. And if she did very well, that I would be pretty high on the 10. Um, does it look like the public agrees too much based off the doubles, but um, maybe third choice if I read that correctly. Um, the, the trainer, Karen Wittick, has a 33% win rate in claiming races. Not horrible. Um, I actually had, is the nine still a bomb? Yeah, the nine's still kind of up there in price. Uh, I had the nine underneath. I I see, late, so I did have the one Lady Hamilton in third. Um, I don't actually have this horse in my pick five, which makes me very nervous because it looks like they're <laughs> going to be second favorite. Uh, however, when I wheeled back, I've now wheeled back a pick three because... It's turfway. Something, something's gonna happen. I some one of my bombs is gonna hit, right? <laughs> so um, I did throw in Lady Hamilton on the pick three there. Uh, so I kind of I'm I'm ten nine one. So I, I I like Lunar Ice. I just uh, didn't put in my top picks there. Mm. 
Uh, I definitely, I'm after looking at it, uh, my top pick, now that I have seen it, is Scratched. Uh, I really liked the five at the time. Me too, yep. uh, yeah. But uh, looking back at, at the other guys, I, I definitely see the 10 and the eight here. Uh, I think that they're great options. They, they are the most consistent. They've got the ability, the one also up there, uh, which that kind of looks like those are your, your three favorites for a yep. reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so th this is one of those where I don't want, I don't want to tell anybody to pick those three uh, and just move on, but five to two, three to one and five to two, uh, I'd have to look at the will pays, but even boxing those three up in an exacta will probably pay uh, mm -hmm. just because it's not a heavy favorite. It looks like people are pretty spread out on this. Yep. Um, out of out of the three of them, you know, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to be the bad guy here with Shoddy picking the 10, you picking the eight and then me pick the one. But I love that inside draw. Yep. Mm hmm. Hey, no hate, no hate. I, I'm on the 1-8 in my uh in my pick five, so I'll I'll take it. And I'm with like these are the races that when a 30 to 1 comes in, people are gonna say, Oh, Turfway, how do you know? It's like because it's a seventy five hundred dollar, eight thousand mm -hmm. dollar mile claiming race, right? Like how many of yeah. these want to go a mile? How many of these are just running because they're running? Mm -hmm. Like there's just a lot of you know, a lot of chaos in these races, yeah. and it has nothing to do with the um the track as much as you know you get low level races you get low level results and so it's this is how i kind of feel about turf races in general why i don't like uh gulf stream nor any turf races like what the hell how did that horse come from out of nowhere it had been, been no sense well because they went 53 seconds for a half mile so yeah um something like this is just kind of random and you know there mm -hmm. are no huge prices i guess the four and the six are currently fairly big and i'm not yeah. going to make a case when our 30 seconds we have left but when the four or the six win i don't think anybody's gonna be like oh there was no way that you could get to those ones like yeah, yeah. They, they had some races so, that got there. real quick as they're walking up to the gate i'm not going to pull up the comment uh but uh, car ramrod wants some botox here botox katie uh <laughs> we are alive in the pick five to seven eight nine ten so you know if botox katie comes in who is now four to one morning line ten to one um, that interests me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course that would, that would kill your, your ticket. So we're not, we're not rooting for that to happen. The, I, I had the nine, seven as th my third and fourth, fourth choices. It was, I had to cut down somewhere and I felt like the eight and one kind of got me through this one, but seven makes a lot of sense and, mm -hmm. you know, hasn't won recently, but I also don't, I'm not a big fan of seven year old mares. They, they get a little scary for me. You know, yeah. Old women, not not my thing. That's what the Botox is for, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so they're in the gate now. Ooh, 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 four is rocking the gate. Um, I, would I wish my not... live stream was the same speed as y'all. <laughs> Are you using TVG? TVG has been all the right, fastest. They're off. Down. In the Oklahoma, one, wait, can't use and the TVG. seven uh, going uh, out to the front here. As kind of expected, Lady Hamilton is taking the lead and will set the pace. I don't believe before. in gate to wires going two turns at Turfway, but come on one, gate to wire, one time. I would be very I did play an exact box with the one <laughs> over the uh, the eight, ten. Well, no, I boxed all three, actually. Uh, it the one pretty well. From Arkansas, Ashley. Arky well, bread, I mean, yep. the, the one's last race is he said he broke sharp and went to the lead and then he just kind of mm -hmm. weakened and he lost yep. to Lunar Ice and uh, one other horse. Ms. Uh, Nash, Michigan. I believe. It was, was, yeah, it was Ms. Nash, yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that the jockey and horse like learn from that experience. 2596, mm -hmm. this guy's walking. I, uh, I had... This, these are my notes before the five scratch that I think that the five will sit off the pace and then pounce the one, which looks like the 10 is coming up here. She will go to a challenge. It's about two lengths yeah. off the lead here. Give me that. We, also have, we also have that 11 Zig Zappa. Oh, maybe oh, not. It's a favorite now at two to one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. 50, nine, the 10 on, is one. coming after the one here. Looks like the one, on, one. is. Get away. 
The one is holding on. Looks like the one's one. probably going to win here. Oh, Nick, please, you're cheering home my pick five being dead. Sorry. <laughs> you were cheering Wait, home my it, pick five being 110. dead. 110. All right. Came in 110. You came in third. Is it the eight? It was the Sorry, six, I think. I thought, it looked like the six. Right <laughs> Looks like the six came in third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yep, six. Now, yeah. Oh, that's and they just crossed the wire. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on Express Bet, Davey? I, I have to use Twin Spires. It's the only okay. thing that you can use in Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. So, so straight. I I don't understand any of this. It's so weird yeah. to me. Like, in I, I went can to, bet on races outside of Oklahoma from my phone, but I cannot ra bet on Remington or Will Rogers in state hmm. unless I'm at the track. Because it's illegal in Oklahoma unless it's Native American because then it's their own sovereign land. Hmm. So that's why we have so many casinos, even though it's illegal yep. to gamble in this state. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's I, let's go four out of five, baby. I was on I was in Reno last week and you can use Express Bet, but you couldn't use Twin Spires or TVG. And so I was like, You're in hey, Reno? I, yeah. Reno's what? the greatest. Yeah, Reno is the greatest city in the world. I'm in California. I'm not that far. It's two hours from here. Want to go right now? Let's go right now. I'm going. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought you meant El Reno, Oklahoma. And I was no. like, what are you doing here? <laughs> no. Jeez. No, Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it came in 11067. All right, three out of ten. Sorry to root root on you there, but you know, that, I that hurts. Nick. That hurts. Oh I got asked. You hit the You're going to refund us if you hit this, right? I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, I, I what it pays. The, uh, the one eight ten exacta box, and it pays fifteen to one for the one ten. So nice. my six dollar nice. bet was paying me fifteen. Yeah. And yeah. I mean that race was kind of what we were thinking it was, which was pretty chalky, which is you know it's been, a little. This is where little it's dangerous. Bit. Yeah, Turfway. It's been chalky. Yep. <laughs> So what's what's about to happen? <laughs> well, we're gonna get the ten home right now because you're you're out. So we'll we'll get that ten home for me because okay. it's the first time starter. So that's yeah. I, I guess I could delete the other one. So that that and <laughs> one is dead. <laughs> but my uh, I'm three of the way three legs through with a ten eleven two ten eleven in the next one. Oh, you had the two ten eleven. Yeah, so I'm alive in a pick three with ten eleven twelve. So we will hopefully get one of those home, right? Absolutely. I'm looking so, at it right now, I'm trying to figure out who I had again. Oh yeah, that ten getting home would be nice. Yeah. The, the two getting home would also be okay. I'm not going to complain about a 10 to 1. But the 10 a first-time starter. Again, rooting against the pick side of the, my, my, my tickets. So. You know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not here to This is a team effort. <laughs> the, but I, I think we're all on the 11, right, was the one that made the most sense. It was that Linda Rice horse coming back down, coming down from Aqueduct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it just feels like one that makes a, a lot of sense in this spot. So real quick, uh, Aaron did have this exacta as well. Oh, really? um, he did you... have the ten on top of the one, but if you uh -huh. box those, yeah, yeah. If you box those. Yeah, well. that's a very logical. I mean, a very good way of playing it. I mean, that's his. The what? What'd you say? Oh, I just said, man, I should have maybe just done one with a box of those two, like Aaron had, instead of boxing all three. But yeah, still a profit. So, well, guys, do you, does anyone need to refill their drinks? Because we got a little video to play here. So we'll be back in a minute, guys. Florida Derby Betting Bible coming up this weekend. And the most successful betting Bible we've ever done was last weekend. If you bet Jared's bankroll, you profited $724.50. If you bet my bankroll, you profited $140.90. If you played them both, you totaled over $865. That's profit. That is straight profit, $865. Let's do it again, Florida Derby. With these betting Bibles, you get race by race plays from both 
myself and Jared for every race. We're going to give you exactly what we're doing and why. So if you just want to follow that to a T, last week you would have made $865.40. You're also going to get pick four and pick five plays if that is your thing. You also get top four selections for every handicapper at racingdudes.com. If you are a monthly subscriber of any kind, you get these betting Bibles for free if you are subscribed during the time they are released. One of the most successful ones we did last year was Florida Derby Day. It's one of the best products we've got on the site. All right. Very well said, Aaron. Yeah, make sure you guys uh, check out the Florida Betting Bible. Uh, yeah, as he said, Jared hit a huge pick three in the Louisiana Derby Betting Bible with very, like, reasonable, easy to get to horses, too. So, um, yep. I, I was going to say, I'm, uh, oh. I'm angry that they decided to do a, Florida Derby betting Bible and not the Arkansas Derby betting Bible. Aaron talks about how much he loves Oakland and, you know, here we are talking about Gulfstream. So whatever, Aaron, I, I will also say that my favorite betting, that it wasn't called a betting Bible at the time, but was in 2020 when there were no tracks running, there was a purple Barton uh, betting guide or betting Bible or whatever it was called at the time, because every week they would just put one out because what else were we doing? So it was one of my fa one of the best times ever to be a racing dude subscriber was uh, 2020 when you got your purple uh, purple Martin racing dudes bet betting betting guide. I'm pretty sure it was called betting guide at the time. I don't remember. Yeah, it was. It's it's changed names a couple times. I like betting Bible though. I like the way it's set up now. If we're being honest, I think. I'm always a fan. One of the reasons I love their podcasts and YouTube shows is that they talk about the reasons they like picks and mm -hmm. that's my reasoning. I, yeah. I hate just numbers I'm like, yep. okay, but why? <laughs> yep. So I think the, the, they give a speed prediction in, you know, it will be fast. will be slow. And I think that was um, that addition and the skipping races because you shouldn't play every race. You should, don't have an opinion in every race. You mm -hmm. should, you know, skip races. And I, I really like that they've skipped races now. So I am a big fan of the the new the new betting Bible, which I'm downloading as we speak. So if I turn into Davy where you can't see me, you will uh, you will know that that's what happened. Is I was downloading too much stuff. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Davy. Ron, Ron, you're gonna get thrown out of here. I mean, we can't talk bad about Arkansas Derby. It's like, it is a very bad card. And I think overall, Oakland's been mediocre at best this year, which is one of the saddest things of my life. It's, I'm, I'm from California, but Oakland is my is my favorite year after year. But um, it's been bad this year. And it's just, it's hard to imagine being bad after increasing the purchase the way that they have. So, you know, what are you going to do? I'm I'm trying to stall. We don't have to talk about this race because I haven't looked at this one at all. So, oh, hey, Shadi, no. what do you think about the UAE Derby? Well, if you've been following me on the Discord or in the live chats, uh, I am really high on Forever Young. Um, it was a horse that I was talking about even before we started talking about fantasy league draft stuff. I mean, we didn't really plan on him being taken <laughs> so early, so uh, <laughs> he could have been on our team. We just we had to get that that crippled horse locked, and then uh, kind of threw a wrench in all of our plans. Um, I he ran down an impressive horse in Bookham Dano. Bookham Dano is going to be fantastic when he comes back in the Pat Day Mile, or at least that's where he's pointed. I mean, you don't think so? That, that was that was me rolling my eyes. The the one that ran at Tampa Bay. That, that was so impressive that he went from Tampa Bay and didn't even make this one. I mean, what do you mean? Book him he's not, he's a miler. He, man, he's not, he's not stretching out. Right. But he went from Tampa Bay mm -hmm. to Saudi. And it's like, mm -hmm. ah, ah, impressive. He, got, he, maybe. he almost won. Okay. Hold on. I'm talking about forever young here. Right. Forever young didn't have a fantastic, uh, trip in that race not ideal to what he would, would have wanted um but yeah he still came running and you know the connections really want to come to the derby so even if he gets nosed out and doesn't get there in time he's gonna have 50 points yep he's gonna he's coming to the derby yes barring any injury or sickness or illness or anything right. like that um I I'm going to talk over you again because it's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to do is to talk over people because I love my own voice but it's 
I I think Forever Young is very good. I think Forever Young is going to get way over bet because everybody says, oh, a Japan horse is going to win the Derby eventually. And mm -hmm. the clothes that he had in the Saudi Derby was very impressive. I just don't know that he closed on anybody because I don't think Bookham Dana was good. So I think it's one of those like he looked really impressive, but doesn't mean anything. So okay. I'll stop getting on your on your pick now. That's okay. Uh, that's why we <laughs> I have opinions. <laughs> um, I keep hearing that the number nine, but post position one. Remember, that's kind of weird over there. Yep. Uh, I hear that horse is scratching, but uh, my <laughs> my sources for that might not be very. Uh, I've heard the same. Accurate. Okay, you've heard the same. Yeah. Oh, hey, Aaron. How are you doing? I see you there in the chat. Aaron, we were calling out your lovely pick of Anna earlier. And then oh, everything so fell apart gonna... <laughs> when Nick when Nick was against our pick five. So How I do have to coach? say that I, I can't throw him out, though I'm kind of with you. And the best is, yes, there was a Will Rogers um, guide. And I'm pretty sure there was no stakes. There was no anything. It was just like, well, we're going to talk about Will Rogers this week. So... Um, there was a carryover at Will Rogers. I think it was like on a Wednesday. And I I'm probably misremembering because it's four years ago, but I'm pretty sure there was like a $2 million pick five at Will Rogers on a Wednesday in like April of 2020. So yes. somebody, somebody look at that. <laughs> I, I remember um, it was Will Rogers in Fawner Park and I was loving it. Uh, <laughs> it was the only sport going and everything was crazy. Um, Gulfstream had like a, like a fifteen million dollar uh, pick six, and and it paid like fifty grand, like back to back <laughs> week. Um, I was pissed because I I went in on a group ticket and I did all the handicapping, and on like the the fourth or fifth race, I picked Diamond Oops, who was a Breeders Cup like podium horse to to win a race, and then the local horse, uh, I have the Jedi came in and won at like 18 to one and just blew up my, my freaking pick six. And I was hit. <laughs> this is the only, the only race I, I missed. I got everything else. Correct. All the long shots, but that one. So Ashley, I, I can't remember if they said something on this morning's due to bet daily, Aaron, if you're still in here, you can probably correct me, but they're not going to be live for any of the Dubai races. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be live for the Arkansas and Florida Derby. But I'm not sure what time. So tune in to Dudes Who Bet Daily tomorrow. And I'm sure they will give exact times there. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, the UAE Derby. Uh, I've, <laughs> I have my pick, Forever Young. Uh, I do have a lot of interest in Killer Collect. But if he is scratching, then there goes that. Um, Middlesome Bay. Mm, I, I'm so high on Forever Young. I'm just kind of looking at all these horses. I'm like, eh. <laughs> I, I was actually really interested in the fact that there were no well i guess panda gates technically ran in america but the rest had never ran in america and this always mm -hmm. seems like one of those like vacoma ran here no we did not one of the other ones during vacoma's year um god what was that sprinter that's running now i forget doesn't matter but normally there's some like an american horse that kind of ships over there to go get points because it can't get points um elsewhere mm -hmm. and not having that this year is a bit interesting. I throw the UAE Derby out of the Kentucky Derby because I've I've fallen for this too many times at this point that I'm not playing whoever wins this race and comes off any of my tickets. And it's going to bite me in the ass at some point, but that's that's my play and my my way of thinking is that I just don't like this race enough to to play in the Kentucky Derby. I have so many future bets on Forever Young, so that would be very disappointing. <laughs> at least in the exacta. Can you at least get in second? Hey, I'm <laughs> I'm here for you. Are you though? You proved this stream. <laughs> for, for for Forever Young, sure. Because I have my, my okay. daughter. Every uh, future pools three, four, and five. I let my kids pick one horse, mm -hmm. and. Uh, let's see, Real Men Violin and El Capi have not been very helpful, but Catching Freedom is a big favorite in my house. There's uh, there's talk of going to college on their uh, Catching Freedom pick, so they got 50 bucks nice. on Catching Freedom, and right. I believe it was Pool 4, if I'm not mistaken. So the, the old one at my house, the 
gets, I think she gets four grand if, nope, 1100 if catching freedom. And the little one has Epic Ride. And I put 50 bucks on Epic Ride for her because it was a turfway horse. And so mm -hmm. I said, if that one wins, we're getting rich together. So, <laughs> bluegrass, here we come. Heck yeah. Nice. What are your thoughts, Davey? Um, I mean, I think Forever Young is the, the class of the field. I think he should win this. You know, I know everyone's trying to take a shot against him, uh, but it just it just looks obvious to me. Um, I'm not against Henry Adams uh, underneath. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. the interesting combination, O'Brien, Moore, uh, their solid combo coming in at eight to one. Um, so Dangerous I get, to go against those two. <laughs> right. So if I could get Forever Young over like Henry Adams. Uh, or vice versa. Yeah, or vice versa. That'd be crazy. I'd be happy with Forever Young coming at least second because then he'd, he'd be going to the Derby. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to key box that horse. <laughs> Do we know? I, I don't pay enough attention to it. Are any of these horses coming to the Derby if they win? Has there been like, oh, yeah, they're shooting for the Derby. That's where they're running here. Or is this just a, um, like, I assume, like, it's a million dollars. You're going to go run if you can because it's a million dollars. I mean, I would say right. Pandagate, yes. Right. Any of the American horses. Uh, there's also George Tesoro. It's also mm -hmm. a Japanese horse, which, you know, as you mm -hmm. know, Japan can get in that. There's also Ballon d'Or. Um, 40 to 1. Man, if that horse, can you imagine? <laughs> uh, I keep hearing about there's this horse. What's his name? Pandagate? No. Uh, uh, is it Oasis Boy or Autobahn? One of those. It's probably think, Autobahn. That you Autobahn, yeah. Yeah. So, because they're the ones that are technically older. Are they allowed to run in the Derby? Because they're four? No. I think they're four on no. the Southern. Or mm -hmm. maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works either. <laughs> so, maybe I'm that's wrong. why. That's why they're carrying ten extra pounds, though, is because they're, they're mm. older. Okay. So weird. Be kind of hilarious if Autobahn and Oasis Boy win and none of the horses come. Sorry, Shoddy. Not rooting against you. <laughs> Again. Just, just rooting. Just rooting for a laugh. Just rooting for a laugh. I'm here for the. I'm here I'm for the LOLs. Laughing. <laughs> I'm not be laughing. My futures now I have to depend on Sierra Leone. <laughs> uh, I have not have... listened to sorry, I have not listened to Magic Mike yet. But if Casa Creed's rain tomorrow, the answer is yes. I love Casa Creed, I love Jimmy Creed as a, as a is he running? Tomorrow? I don't know. Okay, I, I, guess I don't I don't believe I so, but I just if if it's running, Samich picked it. Yes, absolutely. Can, Samich picked it. If you guys uh <laughs> stall for a second, I'll look it up. I can absolutely <laughs> stop. Um, yeah. Davey, where are you playing in this winter? Have you been playing a lot recently? Or are you do you take the winter off like a sane person and come and bet when it <laughs> you know makes more sense? Um, give and take. So like Remington kind of ends going uh into December. Uh, I'm definitely a fan of Remington. I go there, I play the springboard mile. Um coming out of there, I'll, I'll play some of the the kind of small prep races. I used to be a big golf stream guy. Uh then I, you know, went, got sane, I guess. Um, but so I, I've done a little bit the winter. I kind of, I kind of do take off a little bit to, to follow the Derby trail a little bit yep. more. And then in the summer, uh, I, I really get after the, the handicapping all the, like doing a little bit more tracks. Yep. Um, but right now I'd say, uh, I, I really enjoy Oak Lawn. I was doing Louisiana a little bit. Um, and then obviously trying to get in the turf way more. Yeah. That, what I have learned about myself and why I talk about Turfway in a way that I don't, or not Turfway, Gulfstream, is that I, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of single surfaces and having the dirt at Oaklawn and just the synthetic at Turfway Park has made it much easier for me to kind of understand for my little brain to comprehend. Um, I'm not a fan of turf racing. I know that's against what everyone in the world is. Everybody loves turf racing and they just kind of deal with dirt racing. But I, I find mm -hmm. dirt racing to be fun and while predictable, go go do Oakland tomorrow and tell me how predictable dirt right. is. So I'm so I'm a fan of that. To an <laughs> answer the question, Costa Creed does run tomorrow with Louis Saez aboard. Ooh. Yeah. So, against new oh he i just realized i had i had that one pulled up and i was sitting here scrolling through <laughs> um okay let we are six minutes to the other race so we should probably pull that one up let me get that going 
Again, there's probably an easier way to do this. I just don't know how. Yeah, it's all right. All right. I just like the background. It's worth it's worth looking at the background. This race had a <laughs> bunch of scratches, uh, yeah. which you know I was kind of thankful for because man, a lot of the horses that scratched, I was not sure um, about. Um, I did have the six who scratched on top, um, so that was not fun. Um, but I think we all kind of agree at this point that the 11, the Linda Rice trainee, who is currently nine to five, so public kind of agrees there. Um, 67 win rate uh, um, in the claiming race is 100% in the money. So at least play this horse in, in an exact or try, right? Yep. And I, I'm with you on that. It makes it's the most logical one because you have Linda Rice shipping down and she just doesn't do it very often when she does. Mm -hmm. She's very good at it. Um, the other one that I used was the 10. Um, I've really fallen back in love with uh, Mick Ruiz. He runs a lot in California or he used to run a lot in California. And it seems like mm -hmm. he's just moved to Kentucky now. And so he owns a lot of the horses he runs and he doesn't seem to run in super high quality races. He seems to run them in 15 K maiden claimers, but first time starters, he's been f bad. Ooh, bad as first time starters. He's over eight this year at Turfway, um, or over eight for the first time starters in the last year. So maybe I shouldn't have included that one, but too late now already on the ticket. So yeah, and you need do. uh two, 10, 11, two, 10, 11 is who I'm alive to. Yeah. Okay. Like the the two weight break, I think that'll help him a little bit. The ten, uh, I love Garcia, great jockey. Um, you can tell that everybody else also kind of likes it. Uh, Twelve to one down to five to one. I do think East Stormy probably the one to beat, but I will. Uh, I think I'm going to try to play again, so I, I will probably probably put just a win bet or something on the ten. Um, I really wanted to like the three. Um, cause I mean, if you, yep. you look at that, that resume, like the, the figures aren't awful, especially like the, the, the first three in his career or the, the, let me go look at him. Sorry. Yep. Her last three have been really good at turf way. I, and, I, and I like shouldn't say the, really the good two races. She's just regressed from running, uh, like back to back right. 80 figs to sixties. And so it's yep. just it's concerning, uh, with yep. that drop that she she's just given up uh the, so I, that's why I'm, i wanted to um so i'm gonna say the 10 on top then I, I might put the two in second place if you wanted to, to try to you know go vertical and, and go yep. against the favorite of stormy yeah the three is cutting back and that was the part that i thought stood gave her a chance here is that she hasn't ran for less than a mile now she's running at six and a half so that one, that's the reason I'm off, but it's also the reason I'm terrified of her is that maybe she wants to, she's just a closing sprinter as opposed to being a miler. So there is yeah. a, a little fear in my life of the three winning here coming off of enough scratches that, you know, six to one was never going to hold because there were the scratches. But I do mm -hmm. feel like yeah, taking a little more money that I wanted to see on that, on that three. Yeah. I also have the 12. So I have the, you know, the pick three because rest in peace. Um, Alive to the 10, 11, 12 here. Um, do you guys have thoughts on the 12? I, 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 I just try. think, yeah, I just think, you know, she, if she can make a run now with all the speed being gone, she'll be a little mm. bit closer than yep. she has been. Uh, Cause I thought that the six would be lone speed here and, or at least speed in the up front. So I kind of was like, Oh wow, where'd all the pace go in this race? Yep. So. And my big thing against the 12 and I'm not against her as much as I can only pay so much um, was that Abel Cedillo jumped off and now running on riding the 11 and Abel Cedillo is, you know, my fourth favorite jockey of all time. He used to <laughs> run. Um, he was at goal at uh, Golden Gate Fields for a very long time, and he was the number one rider there for quite some time. He went down to Santa Anita, and now now slumming it at Turfway. Um, but I thought him jumping off gave me enough of a reason to get off that one because 
she she has she she fits she makes sense but um she hasn't won yet and those speed figures aren't very good so well to answer your question ashley so leabon out of a medal 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 i can't say that horse's name Medallio. 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 that one yeah <laughs> um i'm not drinking i swear it's water um i don't maybe know you do need to, so I was maybe gonna I do need to, yeah it is Friday, you know. After this is done, maybe. But we're we're all drinking. Yeah. We can say Megalodalio Doro, okay, with no yeah. problems at all. <laughs> Making fun of my stutter. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you liked the six uh, before the scratches, Nick. Who did you like before the scratches, or is it still the same horse? Um, I didn't look before the scratches, so I made my ticket after scratches. So I didn't even look mm -hmm. at the scratch horses. So I ended up on the ten and eleven, and I threw the two on as well. Um, I think the two, I didn't realize, got such a big weight break. Let's go two. Mm. Let's get that two home. Yeah, yeah I had a uh, rail. We could see the same thing that the, the one horse had a second ago. Just yep. take that rail, maybe settle the pace, and then. And before scratches, I had six, eight, one, and they all scratched. So I was like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I, I like I the eight a lot, Lodge Hill. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it just made sense, you know, look like. Uh, logical to take that step forward and have one of those performances that these guys aren't averaging. In the gate, everyone settle down now. They're off. It's kind of a weird angle to see the start here. The three is letting the field give them a head start there. Uh, and to the lead, we have the seven partake. With uh, E Stormy and Go Go Star now pressing up to take the lead as Go Go Star partake Go, goes ahead and let, lets them have the lead there. So in order, we got Go Go Star two, partake seven, E Stormy eleven, and Margaret's Lady the twelve. There's a length back to the five, and it looks like the ten, and then the yep. three is is giving them back. again. Uh, yeah, not way back, but they're way back. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> I turned it, yeah. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> now she's going to come flying. Oh, no. Two yeah, is done. So, all right. So, yeah, two is, two is done. Two is, yeah, Got seven. Out to three, uh, two, 69, yeah. All right. Here comes the 12 on the outside. Pretty the 11's easily. done. The oh, seven. no. I'm done. Oh, the seven looks like they're going to run away here. It's a horse that we didn't even talk about, bro. Rob nailed it, though. Rob I thought he was joking, it. but then saw the name and. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, good job, Rob. Nice job, You're Rob. About to partake. You know, I thought he was talking about alcohol. <laughs> Me too, which is why I just let it go. And then I saw, oh, partake. So whether that's what he was saying or not, we're going to give him credit for it. So good job, yeah. Rob, whether you whether you actually were right or not. Ooh man, that busts my busts everything for me. Busts everything. Oh boy, that's always a heartbreak. Yeah, tell me 100%. about it. FYI, the Florida Derby better. All oh, right, we have. I guess I mean so. Usually you can download it and then uh, you make I sure have. after scratches to check back and re-download it because it will update based mm -hmm. on scratches. So. Go ahead if you are a premium subscriber or any subscriber to products on Racing Dudes, you can go onto the website and download the Florida Betting Bible, which will have the Arkansas Derby as well as the UAE Derby. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, uh, you know, Aaron earlier tonight, you know, we had uh, we shared that Anna pick, and then he also uh, had the exacta in that race as well. Mm -hmm. um, which race is most recent race? No, no, no. A couple of races oh, back. I think it was the second race. Okay. Leg. I was going to say, yeah. wait a second here. <laughs> yeah. Partake, oh, eh? And then Frosty simple. Tail, another the other horse we didn't even talk about. So the two horses we didn't talk about came in one, two. Ouch. See, that would have, even if I was alive here, that would have killed me. We only had 11, 12. What happened to the 11, man? That had did nothing. not, that had yeah. nothing. Yeah. Well, I closed my racing dudes tab. So please hold while I go to the racing dudes tab. <laughs> I was going to say, I can, 
I, I just downloaded mine. I didn't get kicked off, so my internet's cooking now. My kids must be off of uh, <laughs> YouTube. But hey, we have one more race to go. Even though we're not alive, we can still bet this race. Yeah, there was so the roulette noises. This is where. Dubai I'm sorry. Cup. Should we talk what talk is... about the Dubai uh, World Cup Ooh, race we thing? Do that, yeah. Um, Talk about my boy, Senor Buscador. Buscador. Blood horse, win the springboard mile at Remington. I love him. So is he still going to be an active runner when they name something after him over there? <laughs> he needs a race named after him. That. Oh, come on. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, I don't know. He, he's He's really, I think, like, He's a little bit of an older horse now, so but he's found his best stride, I think. Uh, so we're, we'll see what he what he does. Hopefully, he, uh, you know, good sire deal and gets to produce little tiny seniors. Kroger, I don't care about your your thing here. Okay. So I would used to say that Senior Brewster wanted to go that mile and a quarter, and that was what he wanted. And then the uh, what was it? The Pegasus where he ran second in that mile and eighth race, like, oh, maybe he doesn't want to go long anymore. And I think maybe that's it, is that now he's gotten, what, he's eight now, seven now? I can read. I can't read because his name isn't on there. feels like he wants to go a little bit shorter now. Oh, I had the and wrong race pulled up. Oops. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just me projecting onto the poor little horse. But <laughs> I, I don't know that he's probably the best router, like, distance classic distance horse currently going so yeah. i that's sort of the way that i've looked at it i don't know that he's going to win this race this race seems to be meh and so maybe he has a chance but yeah i don't know yeah, yeah good, i definitely don't great need analysis to run at this time yeah uh and honestly like that that race going one turn um Probably one of the best things for him. Still getting yeah. the distance with the one turn, a perfect combination for him just to to run him down and, and to nose him out. But here, uh, it, this mile and a quarter, um, you know, and I, I look at this field, Ushba Tesoro, a great horse. Uh, I just don't see a lot of talent up on the front end, and and so I, I feel like uh. The 10 and 11 are just going to kind of follow that same move, try to close late down the stretch and, and pass all these guys. Um, I feel like the funded, maybe even Newgate, are going to push each other. Laurel River, you might throw throw in there. Um, so there will be a little bit of a speed challenge, but, like, these guys aren't super fast. Yeah. Uh, so I just don't know how, how much of a pace is really going to be pushed. Fair. Yeah. Is there any interest in the oh, Kazakh, oh, Kazakhstan? Oh God, that that. <laughs> the, what's Kabirkhan? Or Kabirkhan? Yeah. I've heard I've heard a bit of hype on this horse. He's a super horse. Oh, He's yeah. seven to two. Um, morning line. We'll see. I guess uh, I I haven't looked too much into him. I'll have to look more into this race. I, I don't, I mean, I usually watch this race. I usually don't really bet it. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of the same thing with the, the Saudi one. It, it's they're, they're fun to watch. They're, they're big purses. You get to watch them. I probably should have put like two bucks on senior Buscador just cause he's my boy, but mm -hmm. I didn't fortunately. Dang, I'm really noticing. I'm very sunburned. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you be in the sunlight? Uh, so, Ashley, know. to answer your question, I have a love-hate relationship with this. Um, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm going to follow the jockey no matter where they go. But then you have the situations like what happened at the Breeders' Cup Juvenile when Irad hopped on to Noted. And then, of course, fierceness, uh, fiercenesses odds you know shot up and then you know he was he was the better horse that day so like if you were to you know take into account like oh well i rat's hopping off this horse to go into noted you know mm -hmm. that's the horse to follow and then you see how that turned out um yep. i call it like jockey musical chairs and it's happening um in the arkansas derby hardcore yep. uh if you look at 
the past the jockeys, like what horses they were on. Uh, Christian Torres is getting bounced around all over the place there. Um, so it's kind of hard, you know, like if you liked uh, Timberlake, but now he has Pratt on board, you know, for me, that's a plus because I love Pratt. He's my one of my favorite jockeys. Yeah. So, you know, if, even if I didn't, have, we? <laughs> we already went through it. It's really hard to get that to pull up on here. <laughs> so you ignore it. Yes. That, that's the way that I play it in, especially when you have so many different choices and so many different angles, especially when you go to my Dan, right? Where you like, you're going to UAE, like, well, who came? Well, only these ones. So I do think when you see a horse that had, I rad rode two of the horses in the field and then he picks one of them because he can only ride one horse at a time. Mm -hmm. That to me makes a little bit more sense. And that's a way to look at it. And I may upgrade that horse based on, him picking it but then if jose goes on the horse that he's getting off of uh, i may may play that one too or may play that one instead so i think jockeys make a difference i think there's a a huge upgrade with some jockeys i also believe trying to decide why one did something and not the other you're gonna you're in a lot of trouble unless you know the jockey know the agent know the trainer know something that you know you don't see on the piece of paper i think yeah. you're better off just playing it based on the horse and taking the jockey as a as a cherry on top uh, yes that, that way to end it but there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think everyone kind of i i agree senior buscador in this race is you gotta root for him i i'm not betting this race the only race i think you know i might not even bet any of the uae races because i just think it's fantastic to watch there's just so many good horses here yeah oh, it must be nice um <laughs> so you know can senior school get pace here um looking at the field i'm not familiar with some of the horses so i i would yeah. have to go back and watch some some video on that but i'm rooting for the home team even though he's being leased so <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> I always have a hard time with this race because it is you have a, such a especially now you have so many non-American horses. I just don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. And the PPs don't tell me anything about it. So then it requires me to go watch repay plays on YouTube of races. I'm trying to find out in language that I don't understand. So I, I understand why people like it. I get it. It's a good thing that they do to make a bunch of money. But other than mm -hmm. that, I'm. I'm somewhat against, I don't bet these races anymore. I've learned my lesson. I've, I've lost too much thinking I had some ideas yeah. and it was a bad idea. Great for entertainment. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the Alvarado, all the Alvarados reacting to him winning uh, the, his uh, wife and kids and stuff. Oh my gosh. So wholesome. What a payday. <laughs> <laughs> what a payday, indeed. <laughs> do you guys have any more comments about this race at all? I do not. No? Nope. All right, we'll go ahead and go to the last race. I know we're not alive to anything, but I thought this next race was a little interesting. It's Would've not been... paying nearly what I was hoping for. It's Again, I think it's just been super... The last race was the, the biggest price that came in, if I'm... I think I think you're right, but like the tens, the favorite on the pick five and paying nine hundred fifty eight bucks. So a three four oh, it ended up being what a four hundred thousand dollar pool, and didn't, don't even get a thousand bucks for it. That's uh, feels. I, I'm the conspiracy theorist. It says feels like the computer's new, um, and I think that's uh. at least a bit of it. Is that when you get that much money in here, the computers get to have fun and I mean, yeah there's there's no jackpot jackpot winner in here for the pick yeah. five anyway yep uh for the pick six if the 14 comes in there'll be a carryover i think i, I thought the 14 minutes somebody took it down oh i thought the three is the only one that would cause the carryover but i oh i see that okay I, yeah i'm yeah. looking at but the way it's written i don't know who god only knows it's a it's the only jackpot pick six that's halfway decent to play because they carry over 10% of the pool and mm -hmm. then the rest gets put out as opposed to most of them that they just kind of 
carry everything. So I don't like it, but at least it there's at least some logic to the way that it's played. So there should be at least a carry over tomorrow in the pick six, I believe, unless the 14 comes. But again, I don't know. Watch, watch the race. I don't know. Pay attention. Uh, <laughs> got some derby races and then pick sixes. So should be a good day. Close so who, who do you have in this, Shotty? Um, I I had the the ten and five, uh, but that was before. I mean, some of the scratches in here. At first, I had Wellman the thirteen. Um, I don't think he drew in though, so that's why. I, well, he could have drawn in, just didn't. I kind of looked at this race and only saw the horse fingers as the main speed there, and they scratched. So, like just like last race. I don't know what's going to happen <laughs> now because, like, uh, I had that horse circled that, you know, maybe could go gate to wire. I also don't mm -hmm. hate the number eight Merlin song. I, I had Gray Charmer, the 10, circled three times on my, my form here. I'm still I'm the type of person that use a, uses a printed out sheets because I just like to write on things, which I know there's technology now that I can type, but nah. Does does the three circles means it's a win or does that mean it's third place? That's my that's my favorite. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> I yeah, but I had this uh, ten five twelve eight. Uh, yeah, no, I, eight, the ten 12. is ten at least in the pick five, which is all I was looking at for the will pays is mm -hmm. um, very low. I I ended up on the twelve. I looking mm -hmm. back. I, I see why the tens the favorite and kind of makes the most sense. So just coming and not dropping that much. And last race ran uh, at this level and, mm -hmm. and lost, lost badly. So I don't, that was my, my biggest reason against the 10 though. It was my second choice. So I'm not that much against the 12 has been running at this level and running third at this level. So probably just key it in third for a trifecta and don't, Play a win bet like i just did on it but um i kind of like the 12 because of that been at this level not uh, got bet more than i wanted so i don't know i i had the 12 as my my top choice and i'm going to stick with it without much great analysis because it's a five thousand dollar claiming race so you get what you get mm -hmm. yeah i also kind of had uh i'll have to go back on my notes which i don't i didn't have written down um the six is also slightly interesting to me, especially at nine to one now. So maybe, yep. maybe I'm mm -hmm. wrong there, but for mama five, uh, picking yeah, five up and one. Six are interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, um, I do think I, I was torn between, um, both the horses you guys talked about great charmer. Um, I think it sets up well for clearing waivers. I think it can, like consistently has good figs um, and just consistently runs. I think it, it may set up all right for him. The The speed in this race kind of worries me a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, like you said, I thought it was going to be the seven, but now I'm thinking mm -hmm. it might be Mama, uh, which last race was kind of towards the, the front, took over pretty early and then held on. Uh, so I, I do like those guys. Merlin's song is up there too. Um, so I don't want to sound too basic and just saying I like all the the favorite horses here. Um, but you know, tonight, save for last race, has worked very well for us, so, yeah. which is very odd for Turquoise. Um, so you know what? I'll uh, I'll take a shot and I'll put four Mama on top with mm -hmm. Gray Charmer in second. Okay. And if you take a look at the weights on the two and the three. Pretty, pretty big difference there. Yeah, um, Lieutenant Jack, I thought looked uh, like like back in the past. He's got he's ran some pretty good speed figures. He he mm -hmm. had uh, able to deal on at one point in time even, but he just hasn't been able to really place well. So yeah. and, and kind of seems like he's been uh, regressing. So I, I you know, I, I like the weight break. Maybe this could could motivate him to to run again and really do something kind of on the inside gets the rail but uh i just i think it's not quite going to be his race i think uh i think one of these other guys that that has a bit more of the, the resume of consistency will get it done 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and my I, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna, I I landed on the twelve, but I had the ten, eight, five, and three underneath. So I'm not any. You know, I have slightly mm -hmm. different, but not that different. Whereas, yeah. You know, these all are pretty logical, and these are the times where the logical ones lose because it's a five k claimer going six and a half. The fourteen <laughs> getting the lead somehow is not impossible. Um, Timeform right. has it running second um, at the first call at the quarter mile. So if the fourteen breaks, like I can see the fourteen getting out in front and mm -hmm. getting out in front at six and a half furlongs here feels like one that can win. So I I do. I like the five and 14 more than I should because I kind of feel like they can get the lead. And then the two, one, the weight break and two, the rail and three, why not? Because it, it's gotten the lead before. Um, Got to go. Uh, no, that was 11, not first. I have great eyes. Um, But well, I'll, I'll make the case anyways that, you know, why can't the two also get out there? So um, yeah. you can land on the favorites and they're the logical ones. These are the ones where you probably want to make the case for the longer shots, and none of us have done it, so I'm not going to force myself mm -hmm. into it. But when it comes, we, none of us should be shocked that, like, oh, a 20 to 1 won this last race? Uh, yeah, of course it did. <laughs> well, because we all look at it, and we all think, all right, the seven fingers was the pace, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm sure everyone else thought that, too. And so mm -hmm. now all these jockeys and trainers are like, oh, well, seven's out of it. So... Do we do we push for does the five, the two, and the twelve all like all right, let's try to take this lead so we can go gate the wire? Yep. And then do they over push it, forcing one of these long shots to close and actually win? Knock on wood, that doesn't happen, but <laughs> well, and oh. at six and a half at turfway has been about the fairest distance because it's the one turn. So mm -hmm. closers do win enough there, and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm remembering what I remember. So by all means, it could be entirely wrong and you can get somebody who actually has stats is like not even close, but um, yeah. six and a half does feel like that distance where the one that's running six all of a sudden shoots outside and passes them all because they were going 22 and 44. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on Agador Spartacus, which is a pretty badass name. Uh, it's a California bred. There's a, there's a bunch of different state bread horses in here. <laughs> well, yeah, Kentucky, California, Indiana, Ohio, Florida. I mean, not Indiana. bad on the speed figures. Um, just bad on where he finishes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just he gets I, pretty hard, or at least he did in, in his last race, and then he just kind of uh, slows down. But that was also at a mile, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I see. I mean, I'm just I'm watching his odds plummet here and i i did have him in fourth uh i'm i'm doing a shoddy superfecta so if it hits i'll again show it on the screen but i'm not going to show it until then <laughs> so i was just re-looking at i i use uh uh time form and i also use optics i really like the way that optics uh plots out their speed figures and like where they're going to be in the race mm -hmm. the eight kind of kind of stands out in a way that I didn't notice just looking at time form. So I'm, I'm going to throw myself onto that eight as well. I mean, I had it third, so I guess I did notice it a little bit, but I'm going to do a trifecta box because again, I hate money with the two, no, the five, eight, 10, 12, 14, because I said the 14 has a chance. And so I have to include it. So this is going to get way too expensive, mm -hmm. isn't it? I just spent a bunch of money. But said I'm gonna do it. So here we go. Don't Five, eight, it. ten, twelve, fourteen. Yeah, that's too expensive. But yeah, what are you gonna do? So what? Is, what's what's your thoughts on the fourteen here? I I don't I? have any thoughts on the fourteen. I think the fourteen is oh, garbage. Okay. But I said that maybe it'll get <laughs> first, and because I said that, I'm gonna talk into existence. So mm -hmm. <laughs> fair enough. All right, Ishadi, it's five minutes to post. Who's your top pick, and how would you play this race? Well, uh, the 10 is my top pick, and I wasn't really going to play anything except my crazy superfectas that I do, just mm -hmm. me just playing my lucky numbers plus all the favorites. Uh, but I guess I'm going to follow Nick's lead, and I'm going to play a pretty wacky superfe or a trifecta here. I'm going to go 
5, 8, 10 with 5, 8, 10, 12 with 5, 10, 12. I'm, I, uh, I'm kind of hedging my, my superfecta with the 8 on top because I didn't put the 8 on top. So. <laughs> oh my god, it's truth exposed. I haven't seen you in forever, Truth. It's good to see you in the live chat. Them gray horses. I guess I don't know who's gray. I, I don't really pay attention to horse color on the form. <laughs> who's the gray in this race? Because you got to bet the gray, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick, who is your top pick, and how would you play this race? So my top pick's a 12. And I'm trying to make this ticket so it's not outrageous. So I got down to 24 bucks for 50 cents. So I I played my trifecta of 5, 8, 10, 12, 14 box. But then, you know, I'm going to really hone in now. I'm at 5, 8, 12 over the 2, 5, 8, 10, 12, 14 over. Oh, I'm going to drop that to one more time. There you go. 5, 8, 12 with 5, 8, 10, 12, 14 with 5, 8, 10, 12, 14. So 5, 8, 10, 12, 14. It's it box them and then also put 5, 8, 12 on top of all of them. But that's 18 bucks. So one of those, mm -hmm. like, eh, I can make a case for whatever you'd like. And I, I'm gonna throw the 10 out entirely because I I hate money. So yeah. I just well, Nick just hates me. Went. He's been going against my picks all night. <laughs> I have the 10 second. Like I wrote down well, the I mean, 10 I that's a good way to make sure one of you is right. That's true. Yeah, that's true. true. This is the magic mm -hmm. mic theory. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. opposite. One or the other. <laughs> yeah. One or the other. So we'll get the 10 in second. So we both lose. And the, some the three is the gray. Just by the way. 10 and Jack. Yeah. All righty. Well, I, I, again, I'm going to say for mama. Um, I want to say that she, uh, or he, I don't know. Um, I'll have to look at this. What is this? Gildings. <laughs> Gilding. He. <laughs> Um, is going to I think he's going to inherit the lead and I, I think uh, speed has shown to be pretty strong here today yep. um, and I'll, I'll put the five underneath so I get a, a little three to one just over five to two a little cheeky uh, exacta um, you can probably box it and and, and be okay uh, but I think for some good value I, I will just play it straight uh, five ten uh, and now I'll probably get beaten oh. In five. Was wrong. Three is not three is not gray. What horse did I just see? <laughs> I just saw <laughs> there's a gray horse. I thought it I thought it was blue, so maybe it was uh the nine. Oh, boy. Five. Oh, I'm colorblind. Again, I'm not drinking. I am drinking water. So a two dollar exacta uh mm -hmm. will pay thirty-three dollars for my five ten. Now if not you want to box it and go 10 over the five uh for two dollars it's looking like 36 so i'll probably just go ahead and box it just to just to be safe and you know what i'll put five dollars on it so it's a ten dollar bet with the five ten and it's punched in we got one minute to post yeah, they're walking towards the gate. They'll circle around it here. Okay. Can I spot Marquette lost? Oh, oh, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, for my bracket. Wait, hold on. Let me double check that's the right bracket. <laughs> I could be cheering my own downfall Demise. here in the Racy Dudes bracket. <laughs> All right, are any of you in the uh, Racy Dudes bracket? I am. I am not, uh, but I did agree with Aaron. I thought North Carolina would win it all. Okay. Yep. I, they I just, bet I don't on. Know. The, the way they're playing, it looks like they just keep getting better and better. Like they, they've got it figured out. Um, I like their colors too. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Um, I bet North Carolina State to win outright today. So I bet seventeen dollars and thirty four cents, and I won forty two dollars and sixty six cents. Hey, so. I did better there than I did on uh, Turfway, so maybe maybe yeah. that'll be my play. So I needed Marquette to lose here because I had Kentucky going this far and beating them. So now that Marquette's out, I'm not losing any more points. So <laughs> I'm going to go for victory on this one. All right, so they're in the gate here. Truth exposed. I still haven't seen this gray horse you're talking about. So are you gaslighting me? 
<laughs> You're making me see things. I don't know. Oh, let's see. The eight and the, the eight's causing some trouble there in the gate. Tossing his head around. Looks like they're settled down now. Oh, there's the gray. It's the 10. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Oh, gray charmer. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. All right. So the 14 Raph is. We really sure know how to put two and two together, don't we? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the 14 get touched to the lead, just like I predicted, because why wouldn't right. it? For Mama and Merlin's song. Oh, no, my Merlin's song is kind of getting squeezed yep. out between horses but there. Those three can just run in a circle just as they are. I'm sure you would love that. I would. Sorry. <laughs> not that sorry, because I need to win too. So, you know, not it's, my it's fault. True. It's true. true. <laughs> All right. So it looks like Raph and Four Mama are, well, Raph's kind of falling out. back a little bit and now. Here, but here comes Great Charmer. 23 23.45 in the opening quarter. Oof. They're going to fall apart. A lot apart. lower than the last six for a long sprint. Yeah. When I went 22.6. And so. there goes the 10. Walking on home. Well, it looks like poor mama's kind of given him a little bit of a fight here. And then here comes the eight. Uh, Merlin's song, probably going to finish up third. It's a tough one between five and ten. Looks like five is going to pull away and put away. Wow. That's nice call, Davey. Five ten exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, your five ten came in. <laughs> Good job, Davey. Let's go. So I Let's that was a, I did a five dollar box, so it was ten dollars, but five, so two dollars. It looks like it came in six. five, ten, eight, maybe six. That's probably almost like a ninety dollar exact. Yeah. Me. Yeah. So hope you guys right, put that see. up. In. Slow mo. We got five, ten, eight. Who came in fourth? Two, baby! Hit that one. All right. Dalberg. We'll get that 27 to 1 and fourth. Who was third? The eight. Merlin's, uh, Merlin's we song. All, we all hit. I had the five. We all ten. hit. Yay. What a way to end I'm embarrassed to show my Super Fecta ticket. I'm going to wait to see how much it pays. <laughs> 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 this is like a bridge jump, jumper Super Fecta. Yeah, I put I had, all all the the twenty to ones in fourth place. My five, eight, ten, twelve, <laughs> fourteen trifecta box hit. So you know, hey. yay, we all win. We all win in the end. Don't pay no attention to the pick five. Yeah. So early. <laughs> I, hey, I can't pick the price. All I can do is pick the winners. And when I pick them as a uh, five to two over two to one over five to one, not my fault. I lost money. I mean, yeah. who could have possibly <laughs> predicted this other than? Everything in the entire world pointing to we picked all the favorites. Good job, guys. Dang. <laughs> so did you go did you go four out of five then? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I think you did, did right? I? I think I did. I mean, I don't know how I much you'll get back for it, but I don't care. It's something. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> hey, I did. Well, Yay! what a day. Man, Ooh. I'm I'm gonna get like eight dollars back. Huzzah. Hey, eight dollars you didn't have. Yeah, you know I did. I had one hundred and eight, and I spent it, and then I got just <laughs> minus very little five. back. <laughs> it's gonna pay okay because the pick five is gonna pay okay with that five coming in, right? Or am I crazy? Surely uh, it was a thousand something, right? Thirteen ninety three for a pick 13. five. All right, my pick five is gonna pay me maybe my Not money horrible. back. Yeah, all right. Hey, Surely. hey. Turf play. Yeah, it's turf play. You know what? <laughs> we ended with a win. We're going to, I take that as a win with this track. <laughs> mm -hmm. Best track in the world. We got what? One more day? Is it running on Sunday? No, right? Because no. it's Easter. Yep, yeah. but they don't run Sundays. They just ran Wednesday through Saturdays. Oh, that's right. Well, oh, I'm going to think... miss this track so much. So yeah, do we want to, while we wait for prices to come up here, um, what's the plan? Everyone in the chat, uh, let us know like what tracks you want to see from us. Uh, it's going to be kind of a slow April with night tracks. Yeah. Um, we can always do a little bit of Remington quarter horses. We could. Ooh. 
can become a quarter horse handicapper. It used to be that uh, Los Al ran Thursday. Well, I think they used to want, run Wednesday through Sunday, but when mm-hmm. I was paying attention, they pay, they ran Thursday through Sunday. And so I, I, I love Los Al. So I could be talking to some Remington. Yeah. And Do Churchill that. comes back when Churchill starts the week after Derby week, they will run mm-hmm. later on Thursday. So there is some, there's, there's yeah. some good. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of rough. Like since you're on the, the, the West coast, we're central. Unfortunately, we all have jobs. we got to work. Uh, so we're usually going to miss the beginning races for these night tracks, depending Ooh, on which one we do. Trifecta yeah. paid $30 for oh, 50 cents. The Super Trifecta paid $70. Wow. <laughs> okay. My exacta. Pick five paid seventeen fifty for four out of five. So right. yay me. Let's go to McDonald's, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think exacta, I get it a couple of times. Two dollar exacta paid twenty nine eighty six. Yep. So my my five dollar box. Mm-hmm. So you bet you bet ten dollars. You win seventy four dollars and sixty five cents. Nice. So it's a very and solid. That, very happy. that trifecta that you gave out, uh, Nick, is thirty. Made, made five cents. Yeah. Nope. Sorry. Oh. Made one cent. And I paid. I bet. I'll 30. just say my super vecta cost twenty one dollars. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. My, my 50 cent trifecta box cost $30. It paid $30 and one cent. So profit. Uh, well, I, I didn't get that very first race that we watched. I didn't get my win bet in. You, baby. <laughs> I didn't get that win bet in on the four that, that ended up winning. Uh, oh. It wouldn't let me. I know. Well, you guys were like, oh, we're in the gate. And I was like, oh my God, wait. They're not in my <laughs> And then it was like, oh, this race is closed. And I was like, dang it. So the the two bets I did get in, though, that other exact the box uh, mm-hmm. for $1, so $6, paid 15 bucks, And then that, so Yay. good little 74 and 15 so 75 15 So about 90 bucks today for me. Happy with that. My, but, uh, my so content, Rob, so $16 bet, a, 190 Rob, is this, a, is this a race that's happening tonight, Rose Hill Race 7? I think that's like hours away. It's only six thirty. <laughs> Sorry, six thirty on uh, Pacific time. Right? <laughs> it's eight thirty here. <laughs> yeah, it's eight thirty here. <laughs> so my pick five. I bet one hundred eight dollars. I got fifty two dollars back. So wow, nice. No, uh, you know it's something. That's, that's I, not, I didn't lose all of my money. You could be at a track that doesn't pay four out of five. So yeah, that's true. And I've only hit two pick fives at turfway so i guess i should be happy i hit way more four out of fives i hit uh all five so mm-hmm. i should probably just be happy with myself but what are you gonna oh do? man the super high five paid really well uh, that's hard to hit, yeah that's because it's a dollar right yeah, yeah. Ooh. i wouldn't have been able to have that too up there i only had him there because i only i played all the long shots and fourth <laughs> so Mm-hmm. All right. Well, because that has a carryover and everything. I bet it still carries. So, mm-hmm. and the pick six has a two hundred and thirty-three thousand dollar carryover in the pick six for tomorrow. So, Beautiful. it is a mandatory tomorrow. So, you know, I'll see everybody in the Discord where I post my eight hundred dollar ticket to hit a twenty cent pick six that ends up paying seventeen dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, does anyone have anything else before we sign off for, on for the night? I have a little video to play at the end here. Video. No, I'm just, uh, good Magic luck was... in those races tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah, Magic said play the fantasy draft outro, so we'll play that and then Ooh, it'll be fancy. Over. <laughs> all right. Cheers. Have night, a great guys. one, guys. I sat through all of that for that twenty-eight minutes. You, whoever booked that, and I think I know who it might have been, a hearty f*** you.